in the street and say, I am Shia. I am Shia of Ali. This is our ideology. This is what I want to spread around. He said what I did. Everyone under my government had a shelter. How many people are homeless and they don't have a place to sleep? He said, in my government, there is no one without shelter. And the third, for everyone that is in my government, under my ruling, that I provided the means for them to work. Basically, the unemployment rate for the government of Muhammad al was zero. There was no unemployment rate. This is Shia ideology that we have to spread. This is your duty and mine. To defeat the purpose of those Wahhabis who give fatwa right and left for our brothers and sisters to be killed. We have to spread this to, as, to many millions of people that we can. Can we do it? Of course we can do it. Do I have a solution? Of course I have a solution. That was the topic of my lecture. Practical steps for you and I to defend Shia genocide. Number one, action plan. In majority of states, there are public access, free TV and radio channel. Majority of states. They give you free air hour, one hour video, TV, and one hour radio. Come on board in any language that you want to talk, whatever you want to talk. We will train you, those organizations that are free, we will train you, we will give you all the means, and we will help you to produce the program to spread your voice, to give your voice to everyone. For free. Just come forward. We need dedicated individuals to use this means. We don't need millions of dollars to spend to defend Shia genocide, even though we have to have those. But every one of us here, mashallah, we are millionaires, but not that much giving, let's start at a very low level. That's number one. We can find these public accesses in every state, go to them, and we can spread, and we can defend the oppressed Shia that are being killing, that are being killed daily. Number one. Number two, as our dear brother Haji Mustafa mentioned, we have in every table, I can say in every table, we have a doctor engineer. But how many of our youth are studying social science majors? Political science, lawyers, religious studies, anthropology. When I was in university, I'm taking a class about Islam. You know who's teaching me Islam? A Wahhabi individual, not Sunni. A Wahhabi individual. Every class and every session that I had with him, he talked about Abdul, uh, Muhammad and Abdul Wahhab, the founder of Wahhabis. Praising him. He is the role model. But we don't have any more than I did. And it's a shame that we don't see that many Shia individual spreading the beauty of the message of Ahlul universities. That's second action. Third, every one of us, I believe we have a computer, iPad, iPhone. We can write to our congressmen, senators, every day. There is an individual, I saw a report about him, he is sending a letter to President Obama every day. Whatever reason he has it. Well, every week we can write a letter and keep sending it, keep sending it, keep sending it until one day they will hear our voice. Why we haven't took any step toward defending the oppressed Shia? Why? Every one of us right now, we feel pain in our hearts, but we haven't took any step. Why? Because we don't believe in the power of one. We don't believe it. قال علي عليه السلام أتزعم أنك جرم صغير وفيك طوى العالم الأكبر 
Yeah. Imam Ali Ali Salam is telling the power of one. You think you are a small germ, not knowing the whole universe is enfolded in you. Every one of us can be the one who holds the banner of Ashhadu Anna Ali and Waliyullah upright and to, def and to defend Shia oppressed. But we have to take it first. Are we, are we going to be able to do that? Of course. Is it going to be tomorrow? No. It's going to take years and decades and 20 years and 30 years. But we have to start tonight. Thank you so much. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the reappearance of our beloved Imam Mahdi Ayyullah Ta'ala. Shaykh Mustafa Khun, uh, he's also the director at Imam Ali Center in uh, Virginia, and he's very dedicated to the community. Uh, Mom and Center is also doing a good job in uh, doing community services as well. Uh, thank you again. My next speaker will be a gentleman who traveled all the way from across the ocean. And I'm sure a lot of people here know him very well. He did a lot of good work for the Shia Muslim cause. I would like to invite the former MLA of Pakistan, Honorable Nadi Absal Gordon Chen.
अफगानिस्तान में आता है और अफगानिस्तान में एक डिक्टेटर जाओ था जिसने सबसे पहले जब थोड़ा बहुत इख्तलाफात आम लोगों के जेन में आया तो वो जाओ था खड़ी जीत में आया पैसे तो ये चौदह सौ सौ साल से जा गए लेकिन इस जंग के मुख्तलि फेजेस थे और आज हमारी जनरेशन में जो हमसे पहले वाली जनरेशन में जिन फेजेस में हम पहुंचे हैं वैसे तो हमारा ये भी ईमान है कि ताकत दो ही तबके रहेंगे एक हुसैनियत और एक जजीदियत लेकिन इस हुसैनियत और जजीदियत की सोच माइंड सेट बदलता रहेगा कभी कैपिटलिस्ट आएंगे कभी सोशलिस्ट आएंगे कभी इस्लामिस्ट आएंगे और अब फंडामेंटलिस्ट की एक नई टर्म चली है लेकिन यकीन जानिए रिट ऑफ गवर्नमेंट रिट ऑफ स्टेट ये बहुत बड़ी चीज होती है जब कोई रियासतें कोई स्टेट ये ठान लेती हैं कि हमने इस नासूर को इस चीज को खत्म करना है तो फिर ये कोई मसला नहीं लेकिन जब स्टेट ही शुरू कर दे लोगों के जज्बात को एक्सप्लाइट करना इस्तेसाल करने के लिए मुख्तलिफ तरीकों के साथ तो फिर कभी इसको शिया सुनने की लड़ाई कहा जाता है कभी क्रिश्चियन यहूद की लड़ाई कहा जाता है कभी पानी की जंग बना दिया जाता है कभी जमीन की जंग बना दिया जाता है और कभी असले की जंग होती है और कभी आयन फ्रेड की जंग होती है लेकिन जब पहुंचते हैं तो फिर इन अपने मकासद के इस्तेमाल के लिए यही कुछ हमारे साथ पाकिस्तान में हुआ जब रशिया के खिलाफ मुजाहिदीन तैयार करते थे तो मुजाहिदीन तैयार करने के लिए एक ट्रेनिंग कैंप भी खोले जाने थे बदकिस्मती से अमेरिका और पाकिस्तानी एक ऐसे जंग में दादी बन गए और उस हिसाब में आपने पता नहीं इंग्लिश में वो कहावत तो है लेकिन यूट्यूब का तर्जा मैं बताता हूं कभी किसी बड़े जानवर की आपने ट्रेनिंग होते देखी है ड्यूरिंग ट्रेनिंग उसको छोटे जानवर खिलाए जाते हैं उसको शिकार करना सिखाया जाता है तो वो छोटे कभी कबूतर कभी तितर कभी बटेर तो यही हाल जब बड़े जानवर खूनखार भेड़िए कभी मुजाहिदीन की शक्ल में कभी तालिबान की शक्ल में तैयार किए जा रहे थे तो उनके लिए जो छोटा तितर बटेर शिकारी तो बेचारा पिंदा वो कभी शियान अली होते हैं कभी बरेली बेचारे होते हैं कभी बनारती क्रिश्चियन होते हैं कभी गिरजाघर कभी हिंदू ताकि उनके जज्बात उन भेड़ियों को तैयार करने के लिए उनकी ट्रेनिंग का हिस्सा होता है यही कुछ हमारे साथ पाकिस्तान में हुआ एक बेटर फील्ड अब बन गए जंग की रशिया की और अमेरिका की और हमने मुजाहिदीन की याद कर रहे थे गली गली में कैंप खोले गए गली गली महल्ले महल्ले में और कराब और रात रात दुनिया की सुपर पावर जिस पार्टी एंड मोस्ट डेमोक्रेटिक कंट्री लगता है ये बड़ी पावरफुल डेमोक्रेटिक कंट्री है लेकिन हमने अपनी आंखों से देखा कि लोग की ट्रेनिंग हमारे सामने हो रही है चंदा मांगा जा रहा और उस जमाने में जो लोग कहते थे ना कि ये गलत हो रहा है आज जो भी हो रहे हो कल तो इसको काटोगे तो उनके ऊपर खतरे लगाए जा रहे लेकिन जब वो जंग तमाम हुई यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स ऑफ अमेरिका को वापस आ गया लेकिन हमें किस तरह मुकरम पर छोड़ा है वही मुजाहिदीन जो ये तैयार करके जिनको बड़ी बड़ी गाड़ियां बड़े बड़े जहाज बड़े बड़े टैंक लेके आए थे आज उन्हीं के बेटे तालिबान हैं आज उन्हीं की नस्लें अलकायदा है आज उन्हीं की नस्लों से हम लड़ रहे हैं आज उन्हीं की नस्लें शाम में लड़ रही हैं वही तहरीर में लड़ रहे हैं वही इराक में लड़ रहे हैं वही सऊदी अरेबिया में लड़ रहे हैं लेकिन मुझे समझ नहीं आती एक तरफ तो हम कहते हैं कि अलकायदा सऊदी अरेबिया के खिलाफ है लेकिन उनको फंडिंग कहां से होती है उनकी मोटिवेशन कहां से होती है उसामा बिन लादन तो यकीन कहा जाता था कि सऊदी अरब के खिलाफ है लेकिन हमारे मुल्क में हम देखते हैं कि एक दिन मदरसा शुरू होता है तीन महीने में वो मुकम्मल हो जाता है 
ये पंडित या मनी प्लांट की दुनिया जान की आप ढूंढ लेते हैं कहते हैं साइंस इतनी तरक्की कर रही है कि चुनती भी गूगल के जरिए आप तलाश कर सकते हैं तो इनको वो मनी ट्रांजेक्शन नजर नहीं आती जो अरबों रुपए में हो रही है और एक दिन जेंटर में ये बहुत बड़ी मुनाफ्त हम अपने आप से भी कर रहे हैं और शायद मरना तो सब ने किसी ने हेपाटाइटिस से मरना है किसी ने लिवर की बीमारी लग जाएगी कोई शुगर से मर जाएगा लेकिन मैं समझता हूं कि मौला का कौन है कि सच्ची बात और हक कोई से ना रोके ना कोई तुम्हारे रिजल्ट को तंग कर सकता है ना कोई तुम्हारी मौत को क्लियर कर सकता है और आज आज यकीन पाकिस्तान में जो कुछ हो रहा है इसमें हमारा अपना भी कसूर है हम सेल्फ अकाउंटेबिलिटी की तरफ इधर थोड़ा सा शियाने अली को भी आना पड़ेगा सारे कसूर उनका नहीं है हमारा अपना कसूर नहीं है शिया और सुन्नी की लड़ाई बनाने में वो तो कामयाब हो गए लेकिन उनके आलाकार हम बने हमें थोड़ा सा मैं क्योंकि ये ऐसी मर्ज है मैं तो स्टूडेंट हूं पॉलिटिक्स का आप बड़े बड़े दानिशवार बैठे हुए और हमारी ख्वाहिश है कल्ला करे हमारी जिंदगी में कम अज कम हमारे आने वाली नस्लें को इस नासूर से हम बारी जान छूट जाए लेकिन इसके लिए चंद इकदाम करने की तजवीज है एज ए कम्यूनिटी एज ए मुस्लिम हमें सबसे पहले मैं समझता हूँ सेल्फ अकाउंटेबिलिटी करते हुए ये देखना पड़ेगा कि आया जिन क्या मानने वाले हैं उन्होंने तो अपने कातल को भी शरबत दिलाया उन्होंने तो कभी किसी को गाली नहीं दी आप अमेरिका में बैठे हैं आप यहां पर हर मजहब की हर मजहब के मानने वाले की आप तहजीब करते हैं आप सड़क पर खड़े जानवर की इज्जत करते हैं तो हम एज ए मुस्लिम दूसरे फिर को क्यों नहीं बर्दाश्त करते हमें क्या जरूरत है ऐसी बातें करने की जिनसे उनकी दिल आदारी है अगर इबादत ही करनी है हमारे अपने बच्चों को सब पता है कि किसने हमारे किसका क्या छीना था जिनके यहां मानने वाले उनका दुश्मन कौन था यह सबको पता है लेकिन मैं समझता हूं इन हालात को सुधारने की खातर हमारा सबसे पहला हमारा अपना फल मेरा फल आपका फल कि हम जिनकी वजह से हम पेमेंट से हो जाते हैं जिनकी वजह से आज उनके नाम लोगों को याद हो गए हमें तो उनके नाम भी लोगों को नहीं पता था हमने नाम ले लेके मैं समझता हूं हमें उससे इतना करना चाहिए ऐसी बातें हमें नहीं करनी चाहिए कहते हैं ना कि दूसरे को किसी के किसी के झूठे खुदा को भी कुछ ना पाओ वो तुम्हारे सच्चे खुदा को भी गाली देगा तो इन चीजों से हमें इतना करना चाहिए हम बहुत बड़ी कम्युनिटी हैं और मैं समझता हूं कि हमारे मुल्क में या पूरी दुनिया में हम फोर्स भी देते हैं चैरिटी भी करते हैं लेकिन अगर हम वेलफेयर का काम करेंगे तो ये इस वक्त आप अपनी कम्युनिटी की सबसे बड़ी आप खिदमत कर सकते हैं हमें हमारे आप जाए साउथ पंजाब भावलपुर रैया का तो हर जगह पे कल कहीं पे शेख बैर मैदान बना हुआ है कहीं पे कोई हॉस्पिटल बना हुआ है तो हम क्यों नहीं बना सकते क्योंकि हमारा तो मजहब ही सखावत है हमारे मजहब में कंजूसी नहीं है जिनके मजहब में कंजूसी है वो बना रहे हैं हम नहीं बना रहे तो ये सारी चीजें हम सबको बताए लेकिन इनका अमल करने की जरूरत है दूसरा हमारे और अमां हमारे जारी इनको एक प्लेटफॉर्म पर हमें इकट्ठा करना हो अगर ये इकट्ठा नहीं होंगे तो फिर भी हम अपने दुश्मनों से ज्यादा हम अपना खुद नुकसान कर रहे हैं हम तो इस चीज को भोगत रहे हैं और इसमें भी फंडिंग हो रही है कहां से हो रही है ये आपको भी बेहतर पता है तो खुदा रहा ओलामा और साकली को एक प्लेटफॉर्म पर इकट्ठा करें अगर ये इकट्ठा नहीं होंगे तो हमारा जो आम ले मैन है जो अनपढ़ आदमी है वो बहुत कंफ्यूज है उसकी कंफ्यूजन की वजह से भी हमारी कम्युनिटी का हमारे मजहब का नुकसान हो जाए और आखिर में
मैं यकीन आप अमेरिका में बैठे हुए हैं आप बहुत यहाँ पे दावी भी कर सकते हैं चीजें कर सकते हम जिस जगह पे हैं हम उनको फेस कर लेंगे लेकिन इस दुनिया की सबसे बड़ी जमहूरियत को दुनिया के सबसे बड़े जो हमने आप को कहते हैं कि हमसे ज्यादा इंसानियत की खिदत कोई नहीं कर सकता हमसे ज्यादा इंसानियत तो समझता कोई नहीं है इनको सिर्फ इतना जरूर कहें कि अगर एक पख्तून का बच्चा अगर उसके हाथ में आप किताब की जगह अपना शिल्पोक देंगे तो कल को वो आप ये न समझे कि वाशिंगटन उसे महबूब रहेगा अगर एक बलोच के बच्चों को अगर एक गिरगित पल्तिस्तान के बच्चे की किताब छीन के आप उस तरह शिल्पोक दे रहे तो ये यकीन आज नहीं तो कल दस साल बाद बीस साल बाद पच्चीस साल बाद वो क्लश को वाशिंगटन जरूर पहुंचे वो हमारी गलियों में नहीं रहे वो इधर भी आए तो इस जनरेशन को जिसको आप तैयार कर रहे हैं ना कभी चाइना के लिए कभी रशिया के लिए कभी आप इंडिया पाकिस्तान की प्राप्ति वार के लिए कभी बलोचिस्तान में हम मेरा तो पुख्ता ईमान है कि दुनिया की कोई भी जितने भी एक्सप्लाटेशन के लिए इसका होता है ये इंटेलिजेंसिया के बगैर नहीं हो सकता और किसी मुल्क का भी इंटेलिजेंसिया हो सिक्योरिटी एस्टेब्लिशमेंट जिसका हम कहते हैं अगर मुल्क होंगे नसल होंगी तो इंटेलिजेंसिया और इस्टेब्लिशमेंट आबाद रहे तो खा अमेरिका हो खा पाकिस्तान हो खा अफगानिस्तान हो खा इंडिया हो ईरान हो इन सब के लिए तो मेरी और आपके जरिए मैं तो आपने मेरे प्यार में इनको आप सोचना चाहिए इंसान बड़ी अजीब चीज होती है ये आपने मकासद ये आय ट्रेड के लिए नहीं बना ये असले की कारोबार के लिए नहीं बना ये जमीन की लड़ाई के लिए नहीं बना ये शर्फ और मकलूकात है और इसकी कदर करना मैं समझता हूँ हमारे ऊपर आपके ऊपर और इन बड़ी बड़ी स्टैब्लिशमेंट के ऊपर बहुत फर्क है और आखिर में मैं आपसे एक दस्त दस्ता और प्रेस करूँगा कि यकीन हम वही रजरा है सारे हमें कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ता लेकिन मैं अपने इलाके में मैं अपने इलाके में मैंने बिना हूँ मेरे बाल साहब पाँच का फैमिली के लिए गए आज एक मोमन जो यकीन जा रही है आप मेरे इलाके में जो कुछ गुजरते हो कभी आए तो पूछ लीजिएगा हम तो निगाह से लोग हैं लेकिन मोमनों का सहारा बनने की कोशिश जरूर करते हैं और ये हमारा फर्ज बनता है और आज आप जिस फेज पे बैठे हुए मैं समझता हूँ का कोई पेशेंट है का कोई स्टूडेंट है का कोई डॉक्टर है का कोई लॉयर है हम सब किसी न किसी सूरत में अपना हिस्सा अपनी कम्युनिटी के लिए अपने मजहब के लिए अपने इंसान के लिए जरूर निकालना चाहिए और जब निकालेंगे तो यही बड़ी बात है आप देखकर निमाजे पढ़ते रहे रोजे रखते रहे हज करते रहे लेकिन अगर आपका पड़ोसी भूखा होगा तो आपकी जमात में कोई नहीं है अगर आपके मुल्क में आपकी कम्युनिटी में लोग गुर्बत से मार रहे होंगे तो आपकी कोई इबादत नहीं है हमारी तो ये सारी चीजें एक अच्छा बड़े बड़े तालीस पर बैठ रहे हैं बड़ी बड़ी स्पीचेज आएंगी मैं तो इतनी गुजारिश करूंगा कि वो पेड़ जिन पर परिंदों के घर नहीं होते वो पेड़ जिन पर परिंदों के घर नहीं होते दराज जितने भी हो मगर वो बल नहीं हो और आगर में मेरा कहना क्योंकि पाकिस्तान पीपल्स पार्टी से और पीपल्स पार्टी वो जमात है पाकिस्तान में जिसने दहशत गर्दी के खिलाफ खुल के जान लड़ी और अल्लाह के फतो करम से हमें कोई कंफ्यूजन नहीं है हम पीपल्स पार्टी का हर हरकर हर बच्चा वो ये समझता है कि दहशत गर्द खा आलमान खा अलकायदा क्यों खा सिपाही साहबा क्यों खा रिश्त जंगी क्यों खा किसी मजहब से भी हो हर इंतहा पसंद जो अपनी सोच अपनी फिक्र को दूसरों पर ठोसने की कोशिश करता है वो दहशत गर्द होता है और उस दहशतगर्द के खिलाफ पीपल्स पार्टी लड़ेगी था उसके शहीद अली भुट्टो की शहादत से लेकर मोहतमा बेदी भुट्टो की शहादत तक हमारा ये सियासी फलसफा है क्योंकि हम जिनके मानने वाले हैं वो करबला से शुरू होकर गणित खुदा पाकिस्तान खराब है और हम यकीन भी हमारी ख्वाहिश होती है 
کہ ہمارا استاد شہید الفقار علی بھٹو وہ بھی حسینی کی وجہ سے تھا اور ان شاء اللہ تعالیٰ کے ہمیں پروردگار سے ہمیں یہی دعا ہے کہ یانا ہمیں مظلوموں کے ساتھ کرنا ظالموں کے ساتھ کرنا ہے بہت بہت شکریہ آپ کا ندیم اکرل گوانل صاحب بہت اچھے خیال آپ کے دائیں گیا I would like to request Brother El Nakhvi to please summarize the version of Mr. Kamsal Gondal's speech in English. And at the same time, I would like to invite Brother Ali Daj, because he's one of the speakers, he probably was, he stepped out for a moment. I would like to ask him, please come over here. Essentially what I'm going to do is uh, since we can't say the speech that you just heard um, from uh, Ani Moza Chan, um, he said that it's an honor for him to be here today uh, because he's not just a politician, not just a worker, not just a party person, he also represents humanity and that he is a humanitarian. Um, he said that the question that we need to ask is that what are the roots of this terrorism that we just got exposed to? And he said that the roots lie right here in the city, that you're sitting here and organizing this program. And he said it all began when uh, Russian, uh, Soviet invasion of Afghanistan and when um, U.S. Uh, trying to stop that and use the Mujahideen in Pakistan, recruited Mujahideen in Pakistan, established a force, and people established camps in the streets to, uh, to confront the Soviet Union's invasion in, in Afghanistan, which eventually led to the training of these people with started terrorism, they had weapons, they had training, and eventually that um, started this uh, terrorist movement in Pakistan. And once the whole thing of Afghanistan was done, the Soviet Union collapsed, U.S. just left Afghanistan and Pakistan, and we, in Pakistan, he said, were left with all these terrorists to deal with. Now, the second thing he said was that, let's also ask this question, that who is financing this terrorism in Pakistan today? And today, today's world, when we can find everything in Google, when you have all this technology to track all these, uh, all these banking transactions, why can't we find out that who is putting this money in, in Pakistan to, to, uh, to support these terrorists? Um, he said that um, we should also be accountable. So part of the blame as she is, we should also accept some blame for that because although they started, whoever they is, they started that rivalry between Shias and Sunnis, but we were the instruments used to conduct that. And then he gave three major solutions, and he said that building on that self-accountability concept, he said that you, we, Shias, must respect everyone because that's the conduct that was given to us by our prophet as well as his family. And that includes, um, we must refrain from disrespecting leaders of other faiths and sects. Then he said, second thing is we should establish uh, welfare uh, institutions, including uh, establishing hospitals, schools, and, and, and invest money in similar causes. Third thing, he said that it's absolutely important in terms of solutions that he was giving in that our audience, scholars and doctors, people who read much of this money, and Dallas, should all come on a unified single platform. Then he said that please communicate this message, if you can, to the greatest democracy in the world and those who proclaim uh, that they stand for humanitarian uh, causes, implying the United States of America, that when you take a book away from a child in, in Pakistan, in Quetta, in Balochistan, in, in uh, uh, northwestern frontier province, 
and to replace that book with a gun, eventually that gun will find its way here in the United States also. So in other words, that if you fund, if you prepare terrorists in any part of the world to cause any war, eventually they will come back and fight us. Um, last thing he said that you allocate your time and money for this great cause of attacking Shia rights all over the world. And um, before finishing, he um, made a comment about his party, Pakistan People's Party, to which he belongs. And he claimed that Pakistan People's Party fought against terrorism and then will continue to fight against terrorists. And the leader or the founder of the Pakistan People's Party, Bhutto, gave his life to do the same thing. And, um, and his party, Pakistan People's Party, uh, will continue to fight against terrorism and is committed against that. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Rajendri. Um, the next guest speaker was actually our beloved uh, Sheikh Jalil Abu Jalil, rather, a religious scholar, who was unable to come to this meeting because of his, some health issues that he just uh, faced recently. Uh, so I pray that he will recover from that issue that came up a few weeks ago. Um, I would like to invite to the next guest speaker who is doing a tremendous job for the benefit of the Shia Muslim communities, not just here in the US, but across the globe. He will be talking about the role of Pakistani military and judiciary in supporting and promoting Shia, uh, Shia genocide. And please welcome Mr. Ali Abbas Saad, editor in chief. Let us build Pakistan. So this is uh, Pakistan's leading uh, political opinion website. Uh, we get roughly about one third of the views on this slide that uh, you get on the most leading newspaper in Pakistan's site. And the way we were able to do this was just having all volunteer writers and promotion through social media. And just by having uh, friends share it on Facebook. And uh, basically what I do in my, uh, my schedule, I go to work in the morning, come back, take a short nap, and I work pretty much all through the night to develop the site. And uh, there's, you know, obviously a lot of other people involved who help and support me. Our goal is to support uh, progressive, pluralistic, all-inclusive uh, political parties, particularly in Pakistan, but all over the world, whether it be Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, we would support anybody that is interested in pluralistic. Uh, so, one of the things that we've done over the past five years is we developed and coined and talked about the term Shia genocide. And you, know, you see that term being used in the title of this conference today. But prior to 2008, that term really didn't even exist. So, the way we developed the term is through Twitter, hashtagging it, Facebook, and that. Okay, so the next slide. Okay, so this is this is what I want to talk about, and, and especially want to thank the Afan brothers that uh, you know, talked about the importance of media, and more more specifically, what's really important. Uh, we are going to be talking a little bit specific to Pakistan, but the lessons could be applied to anywhere, which is to talk about linguistics and narratives. What words to use? And uh, we are, and I've seen this even here today, you can see, you know, sometimes we're making those mistakes of using the 
the narratives that are actually being used against us. The very first one is refusing the binary, the false binary of Shiyasuni. If you went to Google and just put in binary of Shiyasuni, the most articles you will see, the first search you will see was LUBPAK Pakistan because we have written the most number of articles on this. So the term that you are trying to refute is that there is, there is a Shia Sunni war going on. It clearly is not the case. It is not a sectarian conflict. It is, uh, it is basically a bunch of the theories which, uh, as some of uh, the other speakers have mentioned some background, that are actually killing both Shia and Sunni. For example, in Syria, there is hardly any Shia there. And so who is, who is killing? Uh, it is the Takfiris, the Takfiri Yogandis are being exported from Pakistan, the, the so called Taliban. These are the Takfiri Yogandi terrorists who are being armed, paid, and right now their uh, idea of their body bags are now returning to uh, Pakistan. So, you know, in Pakistan they are really killing unarmed citizens, now they have to face an armed, uh, armed resistance there, so they are having a tougher time with this. So again, another example of uh, linguistically coded uh, messages that appear in the media is the use of the word militant. They will often say, these are the Taliban militants. That's a way to reducing their stature from terrorist. So the term we want to use is always terrorist. That these, these are terrorists, these are not militants. Militant means somebody is armed. And uh, in Urdu, in Urdu we talked about this too also, the, the word that is used by the Urdu media is Tahapasan. But the word that you really want them to use is Dashatkar, which is a terrorist word. And, okay, similarly continuing on, another thing that we are working on both, and this is true for, also for international media and Pakistan media, is using this false Saudi Iran proxy war theory. Uh, now, there is no evidence at all, absolutely none, that Iran has armed, especially in the context of Pakistan, any terrorist troops. There is, and that's very different from Iran that may have funded political organizations or schools or whatever, very few, and if they are involved. But that's very different from funding terrorists funding uh, weapons, but there is evidence for Saudi support of terrorist groups, and there is specific evidence uh, from, uh, even from uh, Hillary Clinton, the Secretary of State of the United States, admitting that the, these terrorists were given funding and seen uh, out there in the case. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so one of the things that we're very quick to do is to uh, or some people, especially in Pakistan, are uh, very good to do is to blame America, Israel, and the Wahhabis for killing the Shia in the context of Pakistan. The people who are actually doing the killing, I mean, it may be true that, uh, uh, you know, Americans trade with the Iranian, and, you know, that's a long connection. The people who are actually pulling the trigger and shooting people today, we had 19 deaths yesterday in drugs. The people that are doing, pulling the trigger, are the Kfiri Deobandi terrorists. They are not Mojave. They are not Americans and they are not Israelis. So we have to be, I mean, be very careful to distinguish between a historical connection, a strategic alliance, and who is killing you. <laughs> and, and certainly we, we, we should, uh, you know, go and talk to our senators and congressmen and say, you know, the future of America does not lie with a monarchy that gave us 9-11, that gave us Al-Qaeda, and uh, it, that doesn't allow women to drive in the country. The future of America lies with, with people that are democratic, and we do not want our country, our tax dollars, or alliances with uh, oppressive monarchies like that. And certainly that means uh, Saudi Arabia and others like that. Next slide, please. The Kfiri Deobandi terrorists, who are they? These are these Dalu people right there. And you see them, them in the pictures. And these people are dedicated to kill Shia. 
there is no two ways about it. They keep changing their name, they change their name from Sefa Sahara to Fariri, uh, the second comes to linguistics, to Alex and Jamal. So they are trying to hide themselves in the Sunni. So they change the name of their party to Sunni. So th this is why we must distinguish them from the Sunnis. And most Sunnis we will never have a problem with. They're very nice people. This is a militant subsect uh, or a terrorist sub subsect that has evolved. Next slide, please. Darul Ulam Alum Devan, India. This began in 1866. And uh, I wish they had made an institute of technology there. The whole world would have been better off. But they made, a, uh, made that. And uh, out of that, and by no means all, you know, I don't mean to imply that all the Bandis uh, are bad people. It's just those that are terrorists that we are against. We are not against all the Bandis at all. As we are not against all Sunnis. Go ahead, please. These, these were reactionaries. They are a subset of the Hanfi school of thought, and they are the reactionaries to the British rule. Post the 1922 overthrow of the Caliphate of Ottomans and the Sulfi Caliphate, which is what we have now, emerged. They read, uh, people, the people, these initially were very opposed to the overthrow of the last Caliphate of Muslims, and they didn't like the Sulfi very much. But over time, the Salafis of Saudi Arabia have been able to make this partnership uh, with, uh, with the Ulandis. They have you know, spent their petrol dollars to gradually buy up these mullahs and try to find common ground in killing not only the Shia, we are more concerned about Shia because we are Shia, but they also want to kill Christians, they also want to kill Jews, and they get you know, virgins for killing every month. So their, their whole uh, idea is to strengthen the Sulfi uh, Caliphate, or now what will be the Sulfi Devani Caliphate. You see it casting its dark shadow over Egypt right now, where they have overthrown what was also an oppressive grand a democratically elected government. And uh, what's come out of it is the Sulfi bad are in And they are now having you know, partnerships all over the world. Every single mosque in the West is now uh, reading Sufi literature and probably headed, headed by a theology cleric. They have budgets of billions of dollars. So like Mr. Chan was saying, that this Kalashnikov will come here. And the West needs to be very concerned about this. Go ahead, please. Now, here is a, a statistic which uh, was done by uh, UPAN. Uh, all the terrorists that were uh, captured within the context of Pakistan, you can see there are approximately over 90% of them belong to the Dhabi sect. They were not Shia, they were not Sunni, they were not Braille or Al-Hadis. al, -Hadith. al -Hadith, by the way, in Pakistan are very peaceful, who are actually more close to to, to the Wahhabis of Saudi Arabia, the Saudis of Saudi Arabia. But the Saudi Arabians have clearly formed this alliance with the Deobandis, certain parts of the Deobandis in Pakistan, and they have trained or uh, created these mother societies. Go ahead, please. Okay, so Deobandis are 15% of the Pakistan population, is that, maybe 10. And they control about 65 to 70 percent of the madrasas or religious schools in Pakistan. These madrasas spew hate against Shias, Sunni Sufis. The, uh, the Shias are the infidel, the Sunni Sufis are uh, the polytheists, so most to be killed. So what we have in, in the context of Pakistan is largely true in the rest of the world too. They have a very small minority uh, with using the financial muscle of petrol dollars, trying to start, spread the sulfi element. And that's, that's something that should be of concern to every human being in the world. Okay, so, and of course, Jews and Christians are the big targets. Go ahead. Okay, so, uh, again, you know, this is something I mentioned earlier. Look at the size of, this is 2002 numbers. And this has grown exponentially since the earthquake of 2005 in Pakistan. Now, virtually 95% of madrasas 
are they won't give up this person. And when the earthquake happened, the big earthquake happened in Pakistan, the, the Saudi Ministry of Religious Affairs got a bunch of money. All, all they did was went to Kashmir and said, look, you know, God gave you this earthquake because you've become polytheist. Now, change your religion, and hey, by the way, here's the how the reviews. And if you don't change your religion, you don't get a check. So these poor people, you know, they had, okay, if you do, then you better send uh, one of your sons for jihad. And that's part of the deal. So this, this is how they do it. It's very simple. It's, it's a business. It's money driven. And like Mr. Chairman said, he's very about the money. And I salute him because unlike us in the U.S., he's risking his life for saying what he did. So uh, he's absolutely right. His money flows have to be traced. And this terrorism is not going to stop in Pakistan where the factories are. We've already seen that them send plane loads to Syria. Uh, a lot of the people that have been killed in Syria by the Syrian army today are Pakistani or Go ahead. Okay. The other thing, the media has become an even bigger tool in Pakistan for promoting the Bakiri ideology. The particular, particularly guilty are these channels. Sama TV, ARY TV, Dunia, Aaj, NGO. If you go and search on LUBPAC.com, you will see a lot of evidence for this. Go ahead, please. So they humanize, humanize terrorists. So they would invite Mullah Ludhiani to their TV channel and say, so what do you do, Mullah? And he would say, well, you know, I think uh, I think she has a doctor, so she has a winter, which to an Islamist means they should be killed. So he said, okay, fine, go away. They don't ask him any more common questions. They don't say, why do you believe that? They say, well, that's my political party slogan. Just like the People's Party has the slogan of Radhika Brahman Khan. And the, these media people create an environment that the Shia Kafir slogan is somehow a political slogan, just like the Roti Kaprao Gam slogan. And this, this includes not only the uh, jihadi Urdu media, but also some of the so-called liberal English media. And uh, especially guilty are those people that claim to be liberals, and they pretend to be liberals, yet they invite them to their shows, and they are kind of giving space to those people like uh, uh, the jihadis to promote these people even more. Go ahead. So me media uses wake downs like Sunni extremists. What they really should be doing is that these people are killed by the Fili, the only terrorists, who is actually killing them. Sunni extremists uh, believes or makes for or helps create this false narrative, sectarian. This is a Shia Sunni thing. This is what the Western media uses, and this is what the Pakistani media uses. Um, again, I must emphasize, there's a lot of good Devandis who have been killed by Devandis for standing up against this virus. And I've named a couple of them there, Maulana Hassan Jan and Mufti Nizamuddin, but there are many, many more. So it is not that we are against Devandis at all, but we want the media to specifically say who is killing us, and these are the the feeling they will need terrorists. Go ahead. So other other facts that you know are obscured by the media, for example, the, the bombing of uh, Marriott, GHQ attacks, the attacks on bases in Karachi and Kamra, attacks on Sunni shrines like Tata uh, Darbar, and even the Wadi mosques in Tabak of Tunfa, attacks on Amadis and Christians. These are always done by the few Yomani terrorists, which are either the TDP or Nashkar Jhangvi or whatever little group, and there's one born every day. So you, you cannot possibly just call these groups and say, okay, it's today's Nashkar Jhangvi, tomorrow is going to be TDP, and whoever is going to be, it is the few Yomani terrorists. They're always there, but none of the media organizations use this word, either because of fear or they are co-opted. Go ahead. So what we have to do, we have to unite and support each other at every level. Like, uh, like we talked about, we have to ignore our differences. And like uh, mentioned by uh, some of the other people in the video, we have to focus on the media. Today's weapon 
is the media, and especially social media, we can change the narrative. We, if we all just went on our Twitter account, just to people in this room, and tweeted the theory that the, the, the only terrorists, it would make a difference. And that's something we should do. Anyway, thank you very much. Or 
we just be silent. We are targeted by the system. And, and it was going in Bahrain, it cannot be considered as a conflict. I noticed this in, in the documentary here uh, after um, attacking the Shia and, and the news here. The, the official was saying that he was talking about a conflict. We need to deal with this conflict, and this is a problem. In fact, what was going on in Indonesia wasn't a conflict. It is a persecution. It is a genocide. What we are facing in Bahrain is a genocide policy, is a persecution policy. Regardless of what you decide, you are targeted. Another type of uh, persecution is faced by the Persian Bahrainis. In Bahrain, there is about 5% of the population of, of Bahrainis. They are originally from, from Iran, Persian uh, Bahrainis. Those were targeted just because of their race, just because their the, the, the origin was Iranians. One of them, his name is Sami Fakhawi. He is a prominent Persian Bahraini, a very well-known businessman, he owned a, a major construction company in Bahrain. Uh, his company was responsible about building the embassy of the Iraqi business in Bahrain, and he did a, a, a contract to build the Qatari embassy in Bahrain. He is very well-known and very rich uh, person. He was arrested and tortured till death. Killing Fakhrawi, it wasn't something, uh, uh, and it wasn't just an incident. It was a message for all Shia and for all, for all Persian Bahrainis. Killing the prominent figures of this community is, uh, uh, was really shocking to all Bahrainis. Uh, uh, also, there are a lot of other victims, uh, such as uh, Nadir Diwani, who is a prominent uh, doctor, uh, from also from Persian origin, who was targeted and tortured just because of our ethnic Shia and because of his, uh, his origin. Um, under all these circumstances, we cannot talk about conflict in our it is, it is a persecution policy. It is a genocide policy. Um, I'm, I'm currently here based in DC, and uh, I'm, I'm working, I'm, I'm currently a fellow with any national government of democracy. During my program, I, I met with a Pakistani fellow. Her name is Faisal Zahid. She, she was working at the same uh, organization. Uh, she had she had a book telling her story uh, where she faced kind of uh, uh, sexual harassment uh, in, in her job. I went and I asked her about the responses of her colleague, how her colleague and her organization responded to what she faced. Uh, I like her answer. She said that her belief were divided into three categories. The, the, the first category, they were, they were unable to show the sympathy with her because they are afraid that they will be targeted and they show a sympathy with her. They are worried about the top management of this organization. The second category, was a botanist. They, when they saw her targeted, they were trying to get advantage from this and to be closer to the leaders of this organization to get an advantage of this. A third category was some of her colleagues were decided to use this opportunity to have a revenge responses. They will have a problem with them in the, in the past, so they find this a good moment to revenge from her. 
In fact, those three categories, I see them buried in what uh, atrocities are going on in Pakistan or Ukraine or everywhere. The responses usually are going on those three different layers. I think it is really a big mistake if we try to merge all these layers and to deal with all people as all of them as an enemy if they just did not respond and if they did not show the sympathy with the victims. It is very important to identify the real enemy and to keep focusing on it. And whatever chance for building edges and bridging the gap with the others, we need to maximize our efforts to, to, to bridge uh, these gaps. Um, also, I would like to talk about the Pakistani community in Bahrain. Uh, as a majority of the audience here are from Pakistan, uh, the issue that we are discussing is, of course, related to Shia around the world. Um, but I, I would like to focus about uh, the Pakistani community in Bahrain because I think it, it may concern many of you here. The Pakistanis in Bahrain are facing a typical human trafficking cycle. When I was in a prison, one guard of my prison, he was talking with me. He was telling me, listen, my God, he was telling me, we are not your enemy. And we did not come here to kill you. We are victims, as you are a victim. He told me that for him to apply and to come and to throw it in the he need to go to agencies, to agent offices in, in Pakistan to apply for uh, those offices to occupy. And if he applied in those offices, the queue would be very long. So he need, need to pay a bribe to bring his application in front of the queue. He need to have a loan to pay this bribe. After he gave his bribe, he got to Bahrain and he was shocked because the Bahraini regime is giving him totally different offer than what he was expecting. He is not living in a house. They did not give him the citizenship. And he is working in a repression machine and he was uh, and he was offered to work just a guard in official uh, uh, reception for leaders and not to be involved in any kind of torture or any kind of resistance force. He, he told them, this is not a deal. I want to retain that. They told him, you can't retain that. We don't mind. The problem is that he had loans and he wants to pay his loans. He can't retain that. So he is stuck. He cannot return back and he is not uh, happy with his job. This is a typical human trafficking case, but nobody is talking about it. Recently, I was participating in an event in John Hopkins School. Uh, there is an official from State Department releasing the report of the human trafficking. I told them, why don't you cover the cases of human trafficking against Pakistan? He told me, this is a good question. In fact, we didn't think about it. And uh, usually, mercenaries doesn't go particularly under the human trafficking uh, title, but we need to study this. I think they will keep studying this and they will not reach a conclusion because the major issue for not including this issue is a political issue. It is not a scientific issue. <laughs> Pakistan is a also are in the middle of a conflict. They are not involved in. Whenever there is 
a frustration among the participants of Bahrain. They express this frustration by attacking the mercenaries who are coming from Pakistan. The majority of casualties who died from police are Pakistanis of Bahrain. And no one from Pakistan or in Bahrain do care about them. Uh, on the other hand, the Bahraini regime is facing a lot of pressure to go and to put those who are responsible about torture in prison and to have accountability against those who are convicted to be involved in, in torture. If the Bahraini regime gets such kind of pressure, they bring those mercenaries, those Pakistanis, and they put them in prison and they are telling the international community, look, we are putting those social in prison. So they are targeted and they are victims from both sides, from the Bahrainis who are facing the persecution and facing uh, the, the, the all type of, of violation and violation. Um, I think it is important to raise this issue inside Pakistan by the parliament, by the media, by the, uh, all the political and the human rights players. And let me conclude by talking about the role of this government. I think what is common between Pakistan and Bahrain in both cases U.S. government is tolerating with a lot of atrocities by saying situations in those countries are complex and complicated. And we have a very strategic role in these countries, so we cannot talk about the human rights and good governance and democracy and corruption. This is very for both Bahrain and, and Pakistan, and of course it is very in out of other countries. When Hillary Clinton spoke about the Arab Spring, she said that we need to support the Arab Spring, we need to support the democracy, we need to support the democracy. But when she spoke about Bahrain, she said, no, Bahrain is different. The situation in Bahrain, as I said, is complex and complicated. Because Bahrain is having the fifth defeat, and US government needs the fifth defeat to end the war against terror and to support their allies and to secure the supply of oil. Similar justifications are used to support corruption in Afghanistan and in Pakistan and in many other countries. In all these cases, I think. We need to speak out here in, 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 in the United States and ask the US government to have a, a one standard instead of having a little standard when they are using our Who, what are those people who live there in that oil 
religious area in Saudi Arabia. Of course, Shia Muslim, for example, Ali. So I would like to invite our honorable guest, Director of Gulf Institute, Mr. Ali Al Ahmad. Jews. 
we can do the same. A year, we set up a year, and we can hunt them down. Anybody who, who educates murder of Shia or hatred of Shia, bring him down. Legally, we can do that. <laughs> if it's a government, bring him down. If, it, if it's a king, bring him down. If it's the president of the United States, we do it legally, we can do it, but we have to do one thing. We have to have an organization. We cannot just sit here and do voluntary. Look at other people. I use the Jewish experience to everybody knows about it. I have the American Israeli Political Action Committee. How much money did they raised last year? $67 million. Can we raise $6 million for Shia International so they can have an office in Washington? They, they can have 20 professional staff, not volunteers, professional staff, lawyers, people who would go and influence the politicians of this country. So they can have other branches across, across the globe doing the same thing. So we can make the United States government, the UK government, every government in the world is, can do what we need to protect us. So why are these people who are getting Shia are, are walking into the United States? We can do something about it. We can break it down. You know, I am sick and tired of not speaking on this because, no, this is not a joke. This is not a joke. This is not for, for somebody to take and, you know, I, I remember in our community, when we started doing Omar, I was the one who brought, and Dr. Uh, uh, was the Gnosis, brought the, our uh, friends to, to the Pentagon, to the, to the State Department, to the White House. What happened? People inside us who were not working, but they wanted to bring me down. These people are the most dangerous against our Shia community because they are the one, they are the, 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 the they are the, I call them the Ma'awi, the, Amawi, the Ma'awi, who use our faith to destroy us from amongst us. These are the most dangerous. Who want to speak every session, who want their picture to be taken, but they don't give any money. They don't do any, any job. So let's again, this is a serious, serious business. So this is our first challenge, is to build an organization because you cannot do anything. Look, you have a business, what do you have money? You cannot make money sitting in home. You have to have a business. Register it, have employees, pay taxes. That's what we do. This is how things work in life. It's not about uh, setting up. You cannot do this from an Imam Barla or a mosque. You have to have a specific, specific organization. So you take that organization. You have to have an organization. This business, professional business is to do this. You cannot do this, uh, you know, by by having, uh, uh, you know, a horse or by, by having uh, Azadar, this is not the place. This is, has its own place. But to do this, to save lives, we need to have, you, you cannot uh, drive a car across the water. You have to have a ship. We need this ship. Ship is an organization like Shia International, like Shia Rights Watch. These people can, can do something, but they are not perfect. They need money. They need money so they can be, become, they can have, they can equal the influence of ICAC and other, uh, organization. <laughs> I, I just want to use some numbers. Mormons in the United States are 6 million. There are only 6 million Mormons in the United States. Do you know how much money the Mormon church raises in the year? $7 billion. You, you, we say, oh, we are Muslims, we are Arabs, we are very generous. I don't think so. I'm so sorry. Well, I don't think so. And many of us think, oh, Jews are, are, are so stingy. I, I don't think so. Uh, do you know how many Jewish organizations in Washington, D.C.? We need to have this. We need to, to be honest with ourselves. We need to set up these organizations. And we need from our so-called so, so Shia government to, to have. And we need our Shia businessmen, the, 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 the VP in Microsoft, or the owner of this pharmaceutical company, or that, to pay up. It's not their job to do this. It's the job of the professional. We should hire, with that money, American professionals. They don't have to be Shia to do this work for us, to, to lobby, to push, to... There should be a law in the United States uh, Congress that anti-Shiaism, and I want to thank Brother Mustafa for uh, Shia Rai They made 
that word now part of the English language through the, the dictionary. They, I, I was I don't know because I saw it. They talked to the Webster and other dictionaries to make this unhajjazm a word. We need to use that to bring down anyone who not only kills Shia, who hates Shia or who say anything bad about Shia. Because again, this is this is this is our right to defend ourselves. No one will blame us, and we should not apologize for, for bringing down those who, who say bad words about us. Do not, not kill words. Anyone who says bad words doesn't matter who they are. We need to bring them down. So, if, because if you bring one, ten will be here for you. And that's how we do it. <laughs> I think, I think the Shia, Shia International is not a religious organization. So, it is a political organization. It should be like that. And that's why I hope to see it work in, from that perspective. Okay? This is not to say that Shah Khamashi is going to sell alcohol or wine. This is not the idea. I'm just saying that it, it doesn't have to be uh, run by a, a sheikh with due respect to all with the, with the sheikhs here and say it. Because among, I can tell you my experience, I'm being honest, among those people who undermine my work are people with turbulence. Using the name of Marjorie Ishia, okay? We need to say one thing, make a standard that no matter who is the other person on the other side, the rights and safety and prosperity of Shia is number one. And anyone who stands against it, we have to die. I really hope and, 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 and pray. I will support this, despite that this is not my principal work. I want to see Shia organizations like Shia International and Shia America or whatever Shia that is dedicated to protecting Shia and making them make their voice heard to have offices in Washington DC, in New York and world capitals so we can protect ourselves. Without that, we will not survive. Maybe we don't even deserve to survive. Thank you so much. Thank you, Brother Kenneth. That was excellent. Uh, he really represented us all very well. What are the needs and what are the things that we really need to work on in the coming days and years ahead? Uh, our next speaker, who has, and we appreciate that he has accepted our invitation at the very last minute to come and join us here from a little far distance, not of course as far as Pakistan, but he's from United Kingdom. A guest speaker, Dr. Ghulam Hussain Adi, Chairman of Hidayat TV United Kingdom. Like combining that in both the Spanish and the in English. Subsequently, my Shia International. Shukr Kuzar, Bahati, 
از این فرض Matters of Islam, matters of humanity. Shia or Islam is good for humanity. This way, I said, up throughout the history and history of Islam, throughout, Shia or became victim of terrorism. شروع کر دیا آج ہے امیر المومنین سے شروع کر دیا ویر ہی ورک مارچ پینہ مسجد پینہ مارچ پینہ مسجد کو دیکھیں پینہ حسین کو دیکھیں پینہ حسین کو دیکھیں پینہ کار بار उसके बाद सब ने इस बात पे कहा है कि शिया को मारा जा रहा है जैनी साइड का शिया इन द सेंस ऑफ नॉट ओनली इन द फिजिकल सेंस इन द आइडियोलॉजिकल सेंस इन द थियोलॉजिकल सेंस इन द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ द पीस And if you look at 20,000 mass media attacking Shia's identity, you know that? 20,000 in the mass media in the, in the form of internet, print media, paper media. and global satellite. In one country, I, I'm just telling you, in one country, they are saying we are the hardened servant, servant of the house of Lord, house of God. Hundred TV stations, they are spending six billion dollars every year against you. You know that? This is ideological attack on Jesus. Theological attack on Jesus. Twenty thousand media they are working against. She has perspectives, she has ideologies, she has theologies, she has thought, and she has teachings. Hamesha se yaap dekh rahe hain ki she has been tahat ki baat ki hai. Hamesha se yaap dekh rahe hain. Koi yaap us man, you can't find any terrorism or any terrorist in the form of she has. We are against any form of terrorism, any form of radicalization, any form of extremism. Hamesha se taat ki baat, hamesha se taat ki baat. But what will happen in the future? Ittahad, unity, unity, not only unity in the Shias, unity in Muslim brothers, unity and our Christian brother, unity, interfaith for all religions, respect all religion. That is the motive of Jesus. Respect all the religions. Unke mukaddesat ko kisi kisan ke jo unke mukaddesi se hain, khaos ka taaluk unke اقائد سے ہیں خواہوں کا تعلق ان کے نظریات سے ہیں خواہوں کا تعلق ان کے آئیڈیاز سے ہیں 
تو احترام کرو دوسرے دوسرے کا احترام سیکھو ہمیشہ سے شیعہ نے احترام سکھایا لیکن کیا ہے میں آج کا پوائنٹ کیونکہ مجھے کچھ چیزیں چاہیے کہ مجھے یہاں پہ آج پورے دنیا میں اس وقت آپ دیکھ کر دیکھ رہے ہیں آپ کا پروگرام جا رہا ہے ہدایت ٹی وی سے اس وقت پوری دنیا میں جا رہا ہے دیکھنا ہمیں یہ ہے کیا وجہ ہے کیوں جینیسائز کیا جا رہا ہے جس تھنک ان دا لوجیکل ویڈی وائی دے آر لیڈی شیعہ انہوں نے کسی کو کوئی نقصان نہیں کیا کسی کو کوئی مہارا نہیں کیا کسی کے کوئی کسی کو آجیت نہیں تو کیا وجہ کیا ہے وائی دے آر لیڈی شیعہ وائی دے وائی دے تین سائی چیز ہے وائی That is the first question. Second, दूसरा ये है कि शिया पहले तो इसका हल क्या है हमारे पास? And the third question, what is our responsibility? और ये बहुत इस पे जोर देने की जरूरत है अभी. سب سے پہلے چیز جو ہیں یہ ہے کہ چونکہ شیعہ کی جو آئیڈیالوجی ہے شیعہ آئیڈیالوجی ان کے جو پرسپیکٹیوز ہیں کیونکہ وہ فطرت کو ایک کرتے ہیں فطرت اس وجہ سے اس کے خلاف خلاف ہے معصومین سے لے کر دیکھیں آپ تک جانا ایک سلسل اطراع آ رہا ہے وہ خلاف ہے اور یہ رہے گا that's the idea it will be man it will be لیکن اگر ہم میں awareness آ جائے اگر ہم میں awakening آ جائے چونکہ اس وقت جو سینریو ہے all around the world across the world the سینریو کیا ہے تو بھی چینج اور چینج ہو رہا ہے یہ نہ دیکھیں کہ یہاں پہ ہیں تو یہ اسی طرح نہیں It is a, it will be changed. Ideology comes. Dusra masalah kya hai? Chukke shiya hamesha unity ki taraf ja raha hai. Or jo kuch taakate hai, jinko kya hai? This unity create karo for their own command. This with us. This unity create karo. This unity create kya karo? Between shiya and sunnis. Within Shias, within Shias, that is another technique. Within Shias and within Shias. Before that, Shia Sunni. And in Pakistan, there is no any sectarian issues in Pakistan. No. Shia Sunnis, they have a very, very good relationship between them. In fact, very good interlink, interlink between us. There's a no any sectarian issues in Pakistan. <laughs> These signs are about for the pleasure of our Shahadat, inshallah. Allah, 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 اس ہیٹ کرنے والی اس کو کیا ہے گلے کو دباؤ گلے کو انہوں نے دبایا بیس ہزار میکس میڈیا کے ذریعے لیکن نہیں کر دیتا نہیں کیا ہے میں کبھی کبھی سوچتا ہوں سوچتا ہوں جب what is this and why is this آپ کی تصور کر سکتے ہیں کہ جہاں پہ بلینز کے حساب سے تاؤنز ڈالرز استعمال کیے جا رہا وہ ابھی تک یہ کیا ہے روز بروز اس میں نورانیت آ رہی ہے درخشانی آ رہی ہے وجہ کیا ہے اس کی اس کی وجہ یہ ہے کہ تمہیں حفاظت کرنے والا پڑھتے ہیں قید کی بھی سوچنا آنے سے کرتی ورنہ ایک دن میرا آپ کو کرتی بیس ہزار کی کیا ایک قوم کو برباد کرنے کے لیے کیا ہے تمہارا پردے غیب بلا زندہ ہے انشان پھر اس کے بعد اگر آپ دیکھنا ہے دوسرے یہ ہے وہ اس کے ساتھ 
And in each of that, to me, as you point out, I, I should focus and concentrate what is, uh, what are all these possibilities. Inshallah, Aziz, we believe in the socio religious, godly globalization. Inshallah, Aziz. We believe not that kind of globalization. Flight time. Human rights. Not only this is a slogan of human rights. In Iraq, there are there are humans. In Pakistan, there are humans. In Afghanistan, there are humans. In Bahrain, there are humans. So we are saying we are protecting the human rights. So they are not human. Pakistan Where are these human rights organizations and associations and foundations? They can make it a good at that. Palis is Kahe, a marriage of Madari. वो ग्लोबलाइजेशन हम उसके काय उसके काय दैट काइंड ऑफ ग्लोबलाइजेशन व्हिच इज ऑन द बेस ऑफ पीस एंड जस्टिस नॉट ऑन द नेम ऑफ पीस फॉर मोर टू टेल ऑन द नेम ऑफ डेमोक्रेसी टू किल द पीपल क्या किया गया वहां इराक में डेमोक्रेसी के नाम पे जनसाइज किया गया डेमोक्रेसी के नाम अमन के नाम से जुल्म किया गया नहीं सोशियो रिलीजियस गार्डी ग्लोबलाइजेशन वी बिलीव वी बिलीव एंड दैट इज इन शाह इन शाह इसके बारे में प्रगंबर ने फरमाया कि जब मेरा कायम आएगा अर्जा जमीन को इस तरह भर देगा अदल और अदालत से कि जिस तरह वो जुल्म चौस दोशियो रिलीजियस गायबली आखिरी पॉइंट तमाम करो हमारी जो जिम्मेदारी है चूंकि इसमें इस बात को देखने की जरूरत है कि सबसे पहले क्या है कि हम हक की आवाज को बुलंद करें मजलूमियत है हम में और हमें कोई उसमें खौफ नहीं है शहादत हमारा इफ्तार शहादत हमारी इज्जत शहादत हमारा फख्र चादों से हमें घबराने वाले नहीं हर गवर्नमेंट ने आता इससे पहली गवर्नमेंट पाकिस्तान में देखे क्या किया इस गवर्नमेंट ने देखी क्या किया गवर्नमेंट अगर चाहे अगर चाहे गवर्नमेंट तो सब कुछ हो सकता है ऐसा नहीं क्योंकि वहां पे नहीं हो सकता पीस प्रोस्पैरिटी सिक्योरिटी हो सकती है लेकिन अनफॉर्चुनेटली जो कुछ मसाइल हैं स्टैब्लिशमेंट के और कुछ उनके मसाइल हैं आपस के इस बात के जो है वो नतीजा है कि इस वक्त आप देख रहे हैं कि मुसलसल कौम को टारगेट करके टारगेट करके उनको जलील किया गया उन्हें कत्ल किया गया उनकी फैमिलीज को दर बदल किया गया हमारी जिम्मेदारी बनती अगर जो बुद्ध है जमात की आसिनों में मुझे है हुक्म अजान जिम्मेदारी सबसे पहली यह है कि हम लोग इस वक्त जो सारे ये जो ट्रेजिडीज हुई हैं ट्रेजिडीज हुई हैं हर मुल्क में चूंकि शिया इंटरनेशनल इसकी बहुत ब्रांचेस है हम लोग अपने हद तक इस हद तक हम कर सकते हैं 
हमने एक्सप्लोर किया है एक्सप्लोर पूरी दुनिया में द मैसेज ऑफ मार्चर थिंकिंग ऑफ मार्चर्स अवर हमारे शुहादा की अफकार प्रमोट किए जाए अफकार को प्रमोट करना जिंदा कौमों की दलील हुआ करता है एक दिन आके फकत बैठ जाना कॉन्फ्रेंस कर लेना काफी नहीं है मुसलसल कंटिन्यू दिस प्रोसेस शुड कंटिन्यू हम उसके बाद अवेयरनेस क्रिएट करें अवेयरनेस हर मुल्क में अवेयरनेस पैदा करें अगर उनके ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड काम कर रहे हैं हमारे पास कितने हैं हमने हैव वी थॉट क्या हमने सोचा है हमारे शहदा गिरे हैं मिल्ल के शहदा क्या हमने उनकी फैमिली को अपनी फैमिली समझा उनके बच्चों को अपने बच्चे समझा जरूरत है इस बात की जरूरत है इस बात की देखिए आज भगत ये पूरी दुनिया से सुन रही है फकत अपने आप से ये प्रॉमिस करें प्रॉमिस करें अपने आप से देख शहीद फैमिली को मेरी जो जिम्मेदारी बनती है कि मैं उसको प्रमोट करूं उसकी हिफाजत दुनिया के ये पता चल जाएगा नहीं ये मुर्दा कौम नहीं है ये मर के भी जिंदा होते हैं और इनके जिंदा भी हमेशा हमेशा क्योंकि जिंदगी दिया करते शहीद जिंदा नहीं होता है फकत शहीद जिंदा नहीं है फकत शहीद जिंदगी है शहीद जिंदगी है मात्र मात्र दे आर अलाइव एंड दे आर केम इन लाइफ दे आर केम इन लाइफ दे आर स्प्रेड इन लाइफ हमारी ये जिम्मेदारी है हमारी ये जिम्मेदारी का सामने से पूछा जाएगा ये मत समझ लेना हमने अपने अगर अखराज ना से मैं आपको साफ बता दू मैं इस पे बात कोई मुझे नहीं मैं नहीं रहता हूं यूरोप में हूं मुझे पता है वहां यहां के भी अलाज मान कितना हमारे यहां हम फकत अपने इसरा को छोड़ दो फजूल खर्चियों को हम छोड़ दो और अगर हम फकत ये कहेंगे नहीं हम अपने खर्चों में से एक शहीद के बच्चे के खर्चे मेरे दिन में उसकी एजुकेशन का मेरे इंतजाम मेरे बच्चे पढ़ रहे हैं ना तो मैं उसकी एजुकेशन का इंतजाम मेरे मेरे पास और मैं आपको बताऊं हम शुहदा के एक सिलसिला हमारे पास है हम कर रहे हैं मुझे जब बताया गया कि उसमें जो ये जो बॉम्ब ब्लास्ट हुआ था उसमें इतने अहल सुन्नत के भी शहीद हुए मैंने कहा जितनी अमाउंट शिया को दी इतनी अमाउंट सुनियो को सुननी हमारे भाई सुननी हमारे भाई वो हमारे शहीद उनके बच्चे भी हमारे हम आले बैठ के मानने वाले हैं इस दस्तर खान से ये तस्वर ही नहीं होना चाहिए हमारी सोच क्या है ब्रॉड कॉन्सेप्ट वाइडर कॉन्सेप्ट इस्लाम क्या है सिखाता है वाइडर कॉन्सेप्ट हमारा अल्लाह रबुल आलमी हमारा पैंबर रहमत आलमी हमारी किताब जिक्र आलमी हम कौन होते हैं बांग करें अपने आप को हम क्या करें प्रॉड कौन से मैं कहता हूं अगर ऐसे सूरत हाल में अगर किसी यहूदी का भी हो इस्लाम इसकी भी मुखालफत करता है 
اور میرے مولا کا وہ فرما کہ جو پہلی انسان اپنے فیشلائز کرے فیشلائز کرے دیکھے میرے مولا کی پہلی بسیت مسجد میں اٹیک ہوا امام ایک نے ملجم نے مارا ہے امام کی پہلی رسیت کیا کونا لظالم خسما ولید مظلوم عونا ہمیشہ مظلوم کا ساتھ دینا خواہو مظلوم وائدہ ہیز مظلم اور نان مظلم خواہو مسلمان ہے یا نان مظلم ہے ظالم سے نفرت کرنا ظالم سے وعدہ لیے مسلم اور نون مسلم جو بھی ہے مظلوم اس کی حمایت کرو جو بھی ظالم ہے اس کے خلاف آباد بلند کرو یہ آج میں سمجھتا ہوں ایک بہت بڑا کام ہوا ہے پوری دنیا میں اس وقت مظلوموں کی حمایت ہو رہی ہے ہم کہتے ہیں شہدہ شہدہ کے کار زندہ ہیں شہدہ کی فیملی زندہ ہیں ہمیں اپنی ذمہ داریوں پر احساس کرنا ہے اوینس پیدا کریں اپنے یوتھ کوئی قوم اس وقت پر ترقی نہیں کرتی ہے کوئی قوم اس وقت ایڈیوکیشن کے ذریعے جوانوں کو زیادہ جانا چاہیے ایل کی طرف جاؤ ایل کی طرف جاؤ ایل سے ترقی ملتی ہے قوموں ہماری میراس مکتب احل بیت کی جو میراس ہے وہ ایل کے ذریعے آج ہم ایل کے صدقے میں دلتا ہے علم کے صدقے میں جلدہ ہے اس میں جیسے کہ مدینہ تو علم بھی ہمارے پاس ہے اور باہو علم بھی ہمارے پاس ہے اس میں جیسے چاہیے یہ کہ ہمیں علم کی طرح لاکھے گئے دنیا جو کچھ مرضی ہے آپ کو میں آپ کو ایک چیز بتاؤں اگر کسی جگہ پہ ہمارا فیزیکل فیزیکل طور پر جو ہم پہ اٹیک ہو رہا ہے بہت اوقات جو ہے نا وہ سپیرچول سینس میں اٹیک ہو رہے ہیں اس کو ہمیں زیادہ لوگ جو دینی چاہیے اور جوانوں کو اس میں پھر خصوص کہ بعض اوقات جسمانی اعتبار سے اسے مار دیا جاتا ہے بعض اوقات روحانی اعتبار سے اس کو مارا جاتا ہے ہماری زندگی اس وقت تک باقی ہے اور روحانی اعتبار سے یہ ہے کہ اسے درے اہل بیت سے زور کر ہمیں بہت توجہ کی جو اس وقت پوری دنیا کی جو سازش ہے سازش ان کی وقت یہ نہیں ہے کہ آپ کو مارتے ہیں سازش ان کی یہ بھی ہے بلتستان سے اٹھاؤ بچوں کو غریبوں کو اور وہاں پہ جا کر ان کو پڑھاؤ اور اس کے بعد انہیں وہ کر دو نہیں ہمیں توجہ دینے کی ضرورت ہے ہمیں فکر کرنے کی ضرورت ہے شہدہ کی کاج کو آگے بڑھانے کی ضرورت ہے شہدہ کی فیملی کو پر بڑھ کرنے کی ضرورت ہے شہدہ کے مشن کو آگے بڑھانے کی ضرورت ہے اور یہ جو گلوبل ٹائل ہیں اس وقت جو کام کر رہے ہیں ان کے خلاف ہم نے آباد بلند کرنی ہے اور وہ آباد جو گلوبل ٹائل ہیں اس وقت چاہتے ہیں کہ ہاں کی آمن چاہتے ہیں وہیں پہ جا کے جلد بچاتے ہیں وہاں پہ جا کر ہم جینو پریسی لائیں گے وہیں پہ جا کر جینو پریسی لائیں گے ان کو ہمیں اویرنس کی ضرورت ہے ہمیں آگاہی کی ضرورت ہے اس وقت دشمن میں آپ کو کہتا ہوں پاکستان کی صورت دار بہت کریٹیکل ہے گزشتہ گورنمنٹ سی اس سے بھی ہماری امیدیں تھی کہ چلے ٹھیک ہے ہمارے اس میں کافی حد تک ہمارے اپنے لوگ انباز تھے لیکن آپ نے دیکھا مور دن ٹوئنٹی تھاؤزن کتنے جات پروفیشنل ہمارے ڈاکٹرز کو انجینئرز کو سکالرز کو جو وہاں پہ گورنمنٹل پاور میں تو انہیں کتنے کو مارا گیا ہے کیا ہے یہ ایک برین ڈین کا ایک الگ جیسا ہے یہ ایک الگ جیسا ہے برین ڈین ہے یہ برین ڈین کیونکہ قوم سے اگر کسی مند کو نکال دیا جائے تو پیچھے کچھ نہیں ہے مند کو نکال دیا اس وجہ سے بڑے بڑے سکانر بڑے بڑے ڈاکٹر بڑے بڑے انجینئر بڑے بڑے مقالا اور پروفیشنل انداز کے ساتھ اور اس سے پھر گورنمنٹ سے کچھ امید ہے کہ ٹھیک ہے کیا چاہتا پانے والا ہے اور یہ ہونے والا ہے اور پتہ نہیں جائے اس نے اس سے بھی زیادہ جو ہو رہا ہے اس کے یہی ہے لیکن خبرانے کی اس وجہ سے ضرورت نہیں کہ اس وجہ سے کہ مولا ہمارا شفقت کر رہا ہے ہمارے سروں پہ ہاتھ ہے اس کا اور ہمیشہ سے یہ وہ دعا کیا کریں کہ پروردگار 
تو اپنے والی اور بارس امام زمانہ کے ظہور میں تاجید فرمائے اور تاکہ یہ ظلم اور بربریت کا خاتمہ ہو جائے اور ہمیشہ ان شہدہ کے قاس کو آگے بڑھانے کے لیے فقط یہ نہیں ہے کہ کانفرنسز کر لینا فقط یہ نہیں ہے کہ سیمینات کر لینا بلکہ شہدہ کی جو قاس ہے اس کو آگے بڑھانا ہے اور اس سلسلے کو بھی آگے لے کر جانا ہے تاکہ ہم اللہ اور معصومین کے سامنے سرخورو ہوں کہ ہم نے یہ جو براست ہے شیعت کی شہادت کی ہم نے اس کو پرموٹ کیا ہے ہم اس شہدہ کی فیملیز کے سہاز کے ساتھ ان کے جو یتیم بچے ہیں اس سلسلے میں ہم کل اللہ اور معصومین کے سامنے سرخورو ہوں السلام علیہ وآلہ وآلہ That was the chairman of Hidayah TV. I would like to ask Brother El Nabi to come to the podium and in a short span of time please summarize the speech in English. Once again, uh, this is uh, Dr. Ramam Singh and Beals uh, summary of his speech. Uh, he started by thanking Shia International for organizing this and said that there is no difference between Shia and Islam. It's one of the same thing. He said that look back at our history and you will see that this persecution didn't start today. It started from the time of Imam Ali, Imam Hassan, Imam Hussain, and it just continued since then. The attack is not just on us physically, but also ideologically, uh, spiritually, and theologically. He said that there are 20,000 active media outlets right now that are attacking Shias from all over the world. 100 TV stations that are operating, which have investment of more than $6 billion. So we have always asked for unity, he said. How come, uh, what, is it, what is the threat that our enemies are feeling when we never attack any one of them? And he said, it's the power of our beliefs. That's what they feel uh, insecure about. He said that, um, then what is the solution? And he said that, uh, I will talk about three things. He said that, you know, when Shias has not killed anyone, why are they killing Shias? Number two, what is the solution? And number three, what's our responsibility? He said that there are some powers that, um, that uh, thrive on causing division uh, amongst Shias, uh, amongst Shias and Sunnis, and also amongst Shias and amongst Sunnis. And we should not fall uh, into that trap. He said that despite all these billions, why are we still functioning, alive and well, and he said it's thankful, it's, it's the, the blessing of uh, Imam Zamana that we are uh, protected because of him, and that's why we are still thriving despite all these attacks. Um, he said we are not an unjust community. We do not support oppressors, and we always stand for the oppressed. Uh, and, and he said that. Um, how many, now we focus on the solution, he said, how many media outlets do we need to counter the attack that we're facing at this time with 20,000 um, 20, media outlets that are working against us? He also said that the people who have fallen, the Shias who have died, um, what are we doing to support them, their families, uh, their sons and daughters? And we should make a commitment that we will support one family, if we can support one family, and take money out of all the money that we waste on a lot of other things, and apply that money to supporting one family, we can go a long way in, in um, helping those people who have sacrificed their lives. Um, he said he gave an example, a great example, that's why I wanted to answer that, that when there was a bombing in which Sunnis also died, and he said that he asked from the fund that was going out to support Shias, he said, support those Sunnis also who have died uh, from, from that bombing, because we do not discriminate between Shias and Sunnis. He said, our faith is such that we believe God is the sustainer, our prophet is merciful for the whole universe, God is the sustainer for the whole universe, and our faith says that we must be merciful for all. He said that Imam Ali said they're always standing with the oppressor, uh, with the oppressed, and raise voice against the oppressor. And our legacy is knowledge. We know both the city of knowledge as well as the cave of knowledge and find Prophet Muhammad and Imam Ali. And finally, he said that this global conspiracy 
is not only to kill us physically, but also our spiritual presence, our spiritual um, sending in a sense that they want to separate us, remove us far away from the message, the real message of Eleven. And let's not fall prey to that. Thank you. We all know in 1947, Pakistan came into existence. There was a great gentleman by the name of Abu Hassan Isfahani, who was with the founder of Pakistan, Qaeda Azam Muhammad Ali Jinnah. We are proud to have Abu Hassan Isfahani's granddaughter here as a guest speaker who was also a former MNA and who was the aide to president of Pakistan and a public policy scholar of Woodrow Wilson International Center in Washington, D.C. I would like to request Mrs. Faranaz Isfahani.
The process of reviving Muslims and igniting targeting of Shias was partly a function of Cold War politics. It aggravated after the Iranian revolution of 1979. In his book titled Good Muslim, Bad Muslim, America, the Cold War, and the Roots of Terror, Dr. Mahmoud Mabdani explains this phenomenon. He explains that the Iranian Revolution of 1979 coincided with the anti-Soviet war in Afghanistan and had a profound influence on the conduct. I quote him here, the Iranian Revolution led to a restructuring of relations between the United States and political Islam. Prior to it, America saw the world in rather simple terms. On one side was the Soviet Union and militant third world nationalism, which America regarded as a Soviet tool. On the other side was political Islam, which America considered an unqualified ally in the struggle against the Soviet Union. The Iranian revolution changed that equation. An Islamist regime was born that was not only Islamist and anti-communist, but at the same time, fervently nationalist. According to Dr. Mabdani, the more the Iranian regime confronted the United States, the more official America was persuaded to search for friends in the neighborhood. Regimes like that of Saddam Hussein in Iraq took advantage of the U.S.'s concerns about Iran. In Mabdani's words, the revolution in Iran taught the United States to distinguish between two faces of political Islam, the revolutionary and the elitist. The revolutionary side saw the organization of Islamic social movements and mass participation as crucial to ushering in an independent Islamic state. But pro-US monarchy has created a simple formula for U.S. policy makers. It identifies a revolutionary face of political Islam with Iran and the Shias, and the elitist face with the majority Sunni pro-American regimes such as those in Saudi Arabia. But this simplification will only hurt the United States and disrupt the global order and regional peace, as we are seeing today. Shia are by no means an extension of the Iranian regime, and Shia are people of faith, but we all have different political opinions and views. It is time for people in the United States to be informed of the complexities of the Muslim world. And each one of us here today has a role to play in that. <laughs> the international community must not inadvertently support terrorism and target killing, even genocide against Shias, based on erroneous geopolitical calculations. If Al Qaeda <coughs> is the enemy of global peace, then its target, the Shias, should receive global support and sympathy. <laughs> it is equally important to note that those bankrolling the anti Shia effort cannot be trusted by the international community as reliable partners in the global effort against terrorism. Shias who are themselves victims of terrorism in Pakistan, Syria, Iraq, and Bahrain are far more committed to eliminating the scourge of terrorism because we live with it day in and day out. In the spirit of this conference, 
Um, I would like to uh, come up with what I think of could be um, a, an angle, a direction that we move forward in. I propose that we demand today the appointment of a UN rapporteur on violence, targeting and genocide of Shia around the world. کا پرچار کرنے والے 
قابل احترام مسلمان ہوتے ہیں اور تمام مذاہب سے جن سے تعلق رکھتے ہیں لوگ چاہے کسی بھی مذہب سے تعلق رکھتے ہیں ہم تو یہی درس لے کے آئے ہیں کہ ایک انسان کا خون جو ہے وہ تمام انسانیت کا خون اور لانت بھیجتا ہوں سوچ کے اوپر جس کو کبھی یزید کا کبھی مامون رشید کا کبھی کوئی کسی چہرے کے ساتھ آیا کبھی کسی چہرے کے ساتھ آیا یہ ایک عجیب بنیا ہے کہ اس صدی کے اندر یہ طالبان دینا سے اور فخر کرتا ہوں میں اپنے پاکستانی ہونے پہ کیونکہ اس شہادتوں کے رتبے پہ فائز ہونے والے عظیم فرزندان فہید علامہ آر حسین علیہ حسین شہید مولانا سرفراز نعیمی شہید صاحب اللہ فضل کریم شہید مولانا صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم شہید جناب صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم شہید عباس خالی شہید اور سلام پیش کرتا ہوں تمام معاشرہ سے رسول کو جنہوں نے سرکار والوں صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے دیوی تعلیمات کے مطابق اپنے آپ کو دھال کر اور اسلام کے اندر یہ تفریق بھی تھا کہ اسلام تلوار کی روپ پہ نہیں بلکہ سرکار کے کردار سے ہے اور اس کی واضح مثال رضوہ بطر ہے اس غزوے میں تمام مسلمان شامل تھے وہ اس چیز کی سب سے بڑی ابتدا تھی کہ اسلام کبھی بھی تلوار کی موت سے نہیں رہ سکتا جو حالات میرے ملک میں ہیں اور جو میں نے اپنے موزز سپیکر سے سنا تو میں تو اپنے ملک کے اندر ان حالات کا اگر تجزیہ کروں اور جو میں نے اب تک کی جتنی گفتوں کو سنی ہے تو اس کا نجوہ تو مجھے صرف ایک شیئر میں نظر آتا ہے وہ ماں بے شیئر دیتا ہے چلتے ہیں گدے پاؤں کوئی جا ہو جائے چلتے ہیں دبے پاؤں کو ہی جاگ نہ جائے تو غلامی کے اسیروں کی فقط یہی سزا ہے چلتے ہیں دبے پاؤں کو ہی جاگ نہ جائے غلامی کے اسیروں کی یہی خاص عدا ہے ہوتی نہیں جو قوم حقبات کے لیے جا اس قوم کا حاکی بھی فقط اس کی سزا ہے میں گزشتہ دیر سال سے ایک سوال کا متلاشی ہوں اور وہ سوال مجھے نائٹ سیٹس آف امریکہ کے اندر لے گیا اور یہ چند سوال میں امریکہ کی پانچ چھے ریاستوں کے اندر ڈھونے کی کوشش کروں گا مجھے امید ہے کہ انسانیت کے چیمپنز جو یہاں بڑی تعداد میں رہتے ہیں وہ مجھے اس سوال کا جواب ضرور دیں میں چاہتا ہوں کچھ کھل کے باتیں ہوئے ہیں اگر آپ کو ناگوار نہ دیں کافی دیر ہوگی آپ کی خطر کی ہوگی تو میری کوشش یہ ہوگی کہ میں بہت سپیٹ سے آپ کو مفتبوں کو مکمل کر دیں اور کچھ نصیب یہ ہے کہ اوپر اللہ ہے اور اس دیوار میں پیچھے پیڑ رہا ہوں تو اس سے بہترین جگہ میں نے پاس کی نہیں کہ میں یہ سوال امریکہ میں موجود ان تمام اپنے صحابی بھائیوں سے ہیومن رائٹس سے ان کے عرقین پارلیمنٹ سے ان کے پولیسی میکر سے ان کے ریسرچ ریسرچرز اور خاص طور پر امریکہ کے تمام جو ماضی جو ہوں رہا ہے یا جو ہوں رہا ہے جو آئندہ ہوں رہا ہے خاص طور پر چونکہ میں ایک سیلیٹر تو ان تمام سیلیٹرز اور وہ سوال جو مجھے پریشان کر رہا ہے وہ فقط اتنا ہے کہ بلا شوا نائن ایلیون ایک بہت بڑا سانیا ہے اس میں کوئی شک نہیں ہے کہ اس میں قیمتی جانوں کا جو ضائع ہوا وہ کسی ایک مذہب کو نشانہ نہیں بنایا ہے وہاں مسلمان، عیسائی، یہودی، تمام مذہب کے لوگ جو ہیں موجود تھے اور وہاں دہشت زدی کی کاروائی کی میری نظر میں انسانیت کے ماتے پر یہ کلن کا ٹکا ہے کیونکہ اسلام میں تو بغیر اعلان کے کہیں پر بھی کوئی جہاد ہے ہی نہیں جہاں اعلان نہ ہو جہاد نہ ہو نہ وہ فساد ہو برپا ہوئے چاہے بوسٹر میں ہوا چاہے نیوارک میں ہوا چاہے ایمیٹر کنگڈم میں ہوا کیونکہ یہاں انسان بستے ہیں یہ جتنے میں نے آپ کو پیچھے جسر کو بتایا ہے کہ اتیاں ہوا چاہے یمن ہو چاہے جبائے ہو چاہے کیونس ہو چاہے افغانستان ہو چاہے بزر ہو چاہے پاکستان ہو وہاں انسان نہیں بستے وہاں جانب بستے ہیں ان کی نظر میں ان کو سب سے زیادہ فکر جس جگہ کی تھی میں ان سے پوچھنا چاہتا ہو کہ یہ جس میری نظ سینیٹر فیصل بتا دی یہ سمجھتا ہے کہ یہ تیسری آل 
की जंग का अपना कारण हो जाए और बहुत तेजी से इस आए तीसरी आलमी जंग की तरफ अपने आप को लेके जा रहे दुनिया की दोनों जो आलमी जंगे हुई वो दो माइंडसेट के दरमियान हुई और पूरी दुनिया ने उसको अपने लपेट में लेना शुरू कर दिया ये जो सूरत हाल आप शाम में नजर आ रही है खुदा रहम करे लेकिन ये एक तीसरी आलमी जंग का आवाज तो ये जो जंग का आवाज था इस चीज के साथ इसका धक्कारा था नाइन अलेवन जहां दो इमारतों को निशाना बनाया गया और तीन की जानों का जाया किया गया तो उस जंग में जो डिक्लेयर हुआ दुश्मन अलकायदा एक जंग का आवाज किया आपने अलकायदा के खिलाफ पूरी दुनिया ने उसकी मुजामत की उसकी मजम्मत की उन पर लानत भेजी लेकिन जिस मुल्क से मैं ताल्लुक रखता हूं इस्लामी जमहूरिया पाकिस्तान ने अमन उस जंग के अंदर हिस्सा डाला अमन ये अजीब तफा है कि आज आप अलकायदा को शाम में सपोर्ट कर रहे हैं आपके छह हजार तीन की जाने जिनके लिए आपने दुनिया के हर इलाकों के अंदर जंग को फैलाया और आप आज उनको कैसे दे आप उसी अलकायदा और उसके माइंड सेट और सीरिया फ्री सीरियन आदमी को यहां पर मारी
चाहिए मुझे नहीं पता किस तकलीफ के बाद मैं आज का दौरा कंप्लीट कर पाऊंगा या नहीं लेकिन आप जुल्म के आगे आवाजें हाथ बुलंद करना सबसे बड़ा जिया है यूनाइटेड नेशन मैं आगे घूम रहा हूं पाकिस्तान का मैं सबसे पहले ये काम करूंगा उससे अपनी अलहदगी का ऐलान करूंगा पूरी दुनिया में भी ट्रेन में धमाका हुआ आप कहां गए आप उठ गए आप फौरन निकल आए इराक में हुआ बहरीन में हुआ आप आपको नजर ही नहीं आता शाम में आपको नजर ही नहीं आता पाकिस्तान में आपको नजर ही नहीं आता आपको तो चंद ममालिक में नजर आता है तो आप चंद ममालिक के अकवा मुतहदा बने ना अकवा मुतहदा का तो काम यह है कि जहां इंसानियत का खून हो वहां आपको खड़े होना चाहिए चाहे बर्मा हो चाहे श्रीलंका हो चाहे पाकिस्तान हो चाहे अफगानिस्तान हो चाहे इराक हो चाहे लीबिया हो चाहे तीन हो चाहे नहीं तो फिर हम ये सोचने पर मजबूर हो जाएंगे और कल से जाकर अपनी हुकूमतों को यह ऐलान करेंगे कि आज के बाद लोग उसको देंगे जो अकवा में मुतहदा से अपनी दुनिया के खात्मे का ऐलान करेगा और यह वक्त की जरूरत है उसकी वजह यह है कि लफाजिया करते हुए लफाजिया करते हुए हमें अवसर भी दिया मुझे तो वैसे ही लोग रेडियो पाकिस्तान कहते हैं मेरा तो काम ही बोल रहे हैं बहुत अच्छा बोलता है अगर साढ़े चार साल पहले समझ रहे होते तो आज शायद कम से कम मेरे मुल्क में यह वक्त नहीं लेकिन साढ़े चार साल पहले अकेले फैसल रजाबदी के शुरू की हुई जंग में आज नब्बे फीसद पाकिस्तानी नब्बे फीसद पाकिस्तानी उसके हम का नाम है और मैं पूरी दुनिया को
پاکستان میں جس دن بھی وقت آیا ہم دنیا کی کسی طاقت کو نہیں بلائیں گے ہم وہی وطن پاکستانی ہیں ہماری سادات ماؤں نے ناریالی پڑھ کے ہمیں دودھ پلایا ہے جس دن وقت پڑا اسی دن قیام ہوگا اس قیام کا نام کربلا ہوتا ہے ظلم کی آگے جس دن آپ قیام کرتے ہیں وہ کربلا کہہ رہا ہے اور اس دن پھر وہ آخر دن ہوگا یا تم نہیں یا پھر نہیں میں دنیا کو یہ بتانا چاہتا ہوں کہ آپ بالکل بے فکر ہیں امریکہ ہو یونگے ہو یورپی یونین ہو یہاں کے عوام پر یہ طالبان اس وقت حملہ کر رہے ہیں کہ جب ایک بھی مہد کے وطن پاکستانی زندہ نہیں ہو چاہتے جب تک آخری پاکستانی اسلامی جمعیہ پاکستان کی سرکوں کے اندر زندہ ہے قومی ترانے کے ساتھ اپنے پرچن کے ساتھ وہ ان دہشت کردوں کا مقابلہ کرنے کے لیے کافی ہے آپ کو بالکل بے فکر ہو جائیں یہ سینے بڑے بسی ہیں اکیاسی ہزار ناشر اٹھانے کے بعد وجود ہمارے حوصلے نہیں ٹھوٹے نہ ہمارے کسی حوصلے کے اندر فرق آیا اگرچہ کہ چاروں طرف لگوارے ہیں اگرچہ چاروں طرف گولیوں کی بوچھار ہے اگرچہ چاروں طرف ہم لوگ کی زندگی ایک بنکرائی زندگی ہو گئی ہے ہمارے ماں باپ بہن بھائی کارو بار ہمارے رچے دار ہمارے لوگ میں فرق سے دیکھ رہے ہیں اس کے بابا جنگ آپ ہمارا حوصلہ دیکھ رہے ہیں میں پاکستان کی فرزل کی حیثیت سے آئے ہیں میں دنیا کو پیغام دوں گا ہمارے حوصلے نہ کرنا ہمیں وہ عزت ہو ہمیں وہ مقام ہو جو یہاں بیرونی ہو پاکستانی کے ساتھ سلوک کیا جا رہا ہے کہ اس کے اس طرح کیا ہے اپنے جنگ کے اتیاجی کے ساتھ یہ سلوک کیا جا رہا ہے کہ ایمیلیشن کے اندر آپ کے تین تین گھنڈے پاکستانی ماں کے ذریعے ہو رہے ہیں ان کو اس طرح سے دے دے رہا کہ یہ تعالیٰ ہے تو میں آپ کو بتا ہوں کہ تعالیٰ نہیں ہے یہ مولا ہے آپ کو بتا ہوں پاکستانی لگائی نہیں ہے انہوں کیا نہیں ہے آپ کو بتا ہوں کہ تیر لے کر دیئے میں تعالیٰ کو نشن کی حاق ہے اگر آپ نے ان کے ساتھ دل تصمیم کرنی ہے تو پھر آپ کی یاد رکھی گا کہ اگر ہمارے حوصلے کے اٹھے پہلے کی منزل رکھی گا آپ نے پاکستان ایک دفاعی پاکستانی ایک دفاعی دیوار ہے ان دہشت کردوں اور آپ کی آزادیوں کے بیچی ہیں اس لیے کہ ہم اپنے سینے پر ان چیزوں کو لیتے ہیں ہمارا پروسی ملک اس کے پانچ پوڑی جو ہے ان کے ساتھ یہ سلوک ہوا تو ہم سے جنگ کے بدل بجا دی ہے کہ جنگ کی ایک ایسے وقت جو ہم دہشت کردوں کے خلاف کاروائی کے پر جارے ہیں اور پورے پاکستان کا یہ منزل تیار ہوتی ہے فرق پاکستان کا یہ منزل تیار ہے کہ ان کا علاق صرف بولی ہے اور اس وقت نگران کی طرف سے جنگ کی آباد آئے لیکن میں آپ کو بتا ہوں کہ لاہور کا نمازر میں تھوڑے تو فرق ہے جو دہشت کرد لاہور آ سکتے ہیں اور دو آزار لوگوں کے پہلے ہوتا سکتے ہیں پانچ دے پانچ آتی نہیں پاک سکتے ہیں لیکن اگر وہ پاس ہزار آپ کو دلے لیے تو اس کی وجہ یہ ہے کہ ہماری اپنات اور ہماری عوام میں ایک یورس محسن کو روکا گا اور اس کے پاور جو دلے لیے آپ کو دلے لیے شاہد کو دلے لیے پاکے پاکستان سے یہ مطالعہ کریں گے کہ جس وقت ہم مرے گا تو ہمارے پیاروں کو آسانی اور آسانی چلی ہوئے گے کہ ہم اس وقت ہمارے کے بارے 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 کے ب فقری انداز میں گلے لگائیں گے اٹھارہ کروڑ پاکستانی ظاہرین میں پوری دنیا کے عمل کے اس لیے ہمیں ہر کسی کو تعلیمان سمجھنا بن کر دیا یہ تو وہ شہدہ کے لوائٹنگ بیٹھے ہیں کہ ہر یہاں پہ میں سمجھتا ہوں کہ جو بھی یہاں تشریف میں رکھے ہوئے ہیں اس کے خاندان میں کوئی نہ کوئی لاش موجود ہے کسی ماں کی ہے کسی بیٹی کی ہے کسی بہن کی ہے کسی بھائی کی ہے اور وہ لاش بڑی قیمتی ہے ہمارے لئے کیونکہ انقلاب کسی شخصیت کی لیے نہیں آتے انقلاب دو ہی صورتوں میں آتے ہیں یا ملک بنانا ہو یا ملک بچانا ہو اور دونوں صورتوں میں کون دینا ہو چھے ہزار آپ کے بڑے اہم تھے اکیاسی ہزار کو بھی اہمیت کیجئے اور پوری دنیا کے اندر آٹھ لاکھ مسلمانوں کا اپنے ہوا ہے دس سال ہے اس کے بعد وجود آپ ہمارے بڑیے دیکھیں آپ ہمارا اپنے آپ سے زمینہ دیکھیں آپ کے دشمنوں سے آپ ہمارا بیڑا دیکھیں ان کے ساتھ ہم آج بھی برسر پیکار ہیں اگر آپ کے نبیے ہمارے ساتھ صحیح ہو جائیں تو شاید ہم اور پروکار طریقے سے ان کا مقابلہ کریں کہ ہمیں تو دنیا کی کسی تاجر کی ضرورت ہی نہیں الحمدللہ ہم حسینیت کا درس لے کے چلے ہیں اور انشاءاللہ تعالی یہ درس جو ہمیں کربلا سے ملا وہ صرف یہی ہے کہ تلوار اٹھانے کی نوبت وہاں آتی ہے جہاں انسانیت کی حد ختم ہوتی ہے تو میں آپ سے پھر ایک بار مطالبہ کروں گا تمام امریکن عوام سے سارے امریکن سے کہ اپنے رویوں کو بجلیں
और हमें इस तरह ट्रीट करें जैसे कि इतिहादी को ट्रीट किया जाए दूसरा मैं आप लोग से अहम तरीन बात ये करना चाह रहा था कि कान दर्जाल की तो आमद आमद हमारे यहां तो आज हमारे यहां तो आज काने दर्जाल इस शख्स का नाम नहीं किरदार करना और पांच साल से अपना किरदार साबित कर रहा है और लिखने वाले और बोलने वाले और सुनने वाले जानते हुए कि अगर आवाज ना उठाए और पूरी कौम की जिम्मेदारी अगर एक फट पर डाल दे तो बोल जाता है तो ये तो बहुत बड़ी नाइन साहब पाकिस्तानी आप हैं अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह पाकिस्तान में आपको बड़ा पक्का है मुझे ठीक है मैं दुनिया का सबसे कम उम्र तरीन सेनेटर हूँ लेकिन मुझे अपने मुल्क से बड़ा प्यार है उस प्यार को साबित करने के लिए आपका फर्ज बनता है कि जब पाकिस्तान से आपको आवाज आए इंसानियत के लिए उठी तो फिर उस दिन आप और पुरम तरीके से पूरी अकवाम को ये दिखाना है हमारे इक्यासी हजार लाशों के काबिल बॉक्स में इनके जिसम में भी कोई खून है आप तो जानवर हो नहीं प्यार करते मैं तो इस होटल में देख के परेशान हूँ मैंने तो जानवरों की ऐसी खिदमत पूरी दुनिया में देखी है लोगों ने भी की है तो हम इंसानों ने उसके लिए जानवरों से कुछ नहीं मारा क्या नहीं समझा नहीं हमारे पास वो आके वो हाथ हमारे पास जहन जहन सारे आपके पास आप तो समझते हैं कि हम कोई चीज जानते ही नहीं है जाने नहीं चाहते लेकिन दो हजार तेरह में बैठे हैं ये तो पूरी दुनिया जानती है और पूरी दुनिया में आपकी रवैया आपको तना कर हमें तो आपकी आवाम से बहुत प्यार है क्योंकि जा बजा हमने मसाजिद देखी बड़ी आजादी दी आपने तमाम मजाक को एक बहुत अच्छी चीज यही तो इस्लाम था जो आप सुनते और ये ले ट्रांसलेट कर करके अहादी से नबा भी अगर किसी ने सही तरह अमल किया है तो वो यूरोपियन और अमेरिकन थे यही तो इंसानियत के वो तमाम दस हम तकरीरें करें और मैसेज ना जाए तो फायदा क्या है तकरीरों का लेकिन हम तकरीरें करें और माइंड सेट बन जाए माइंड सेट से जाए और आपको दू आप दस लोगों में दे और जिस लोगों में बैठे फिर एक चीज पूछे कि जो दो हजार में दुश्मन था दो हजार तेरह में दोस्त कैसे हुआ हम दस साल इस ताकत से लड़ते रहे इसलिए कि आपने इंसानियत का कतल किया था आज हम बड़ी खूबसूरती दस के साथ मुलाकात शुरू कर दी तो हम तो लाल बेचते ऐसे मुजाकर तो इंसानों के साथ किए जाते तालिबान के साथ मुजाकर और हमारे हुक्मरान मैंने कहा ना उस कौन का हाथी भी फकत उसकी सजा है ये सजाई तो आई है दो भाई जो आए हमारे पास इनको तो लाया सुनने दिया है ताकि ये अपने कंधों पर बिठा के तालिबान को इस्लामाबाद में फेमस करें और हो चुके आज आज पाकिस्तान में कोई जगह सिवाय महफूज ही नहीं और आपकी हॉलीवुड की मूवीज माइंडसेट बनाती है माइंडसेट क्या बनाती है कि आपकी आवाम वो मूवी देख के समझती है कि जो फिल्मों में दिखाया जा रहा है दुनिया में कोई से पूछो वो हकीकत नहीं थी तुम जो मूवीज में दिखा रहे हो तो हमारे असाधों में दहशत कर तालिबान पकड़िया बांध के तालिबान एजुकेशन की शक्ल बनाकर उस पर कब्जा किए जाए और तुम ऑपरेशन करोगे तो मैं तुम्हें बता रहा हूं अठारह करोड़ आवाम जामी ने सैटमी प्रोग्राम की और इंशाला इजाजत करेगी और आपकी नौबत नहीं आने देंगे ये नौबत उस वक्त आएगी जब अठारह करोड़ पाकिस्तानी कबर में चले हमारा मकसद किसी से डर नहीं है हमारा मकसद दहशत गर्दों से डर जो आपकी दो हजार की आवाज और इन शाह उस आवाज को आप घूम सकते हैं हमें क्यों नहीं तो ये एक छोटी सी चीज है और उसके ऊपर हमें आप कहते हैं कि ये लोग अकील हैं पाकिस्तानियों को कहा जाता है सॉरी मैं पाकिस्तान में जा रहा हूँ क्रॉस की मदद लिया कि मैं पाकिस्तानी हूँ पाकिस्तान इस्लाम की बहबोन है हम दुनिया के अगले भी ताकत है आप कहते हो वो कर्ज में चलने वाले कौन तो अल्लाह दिया थोड़ी देर पूरा सुन वसूल करते हो बाद वापस भी किया है और अगर हमें अमन गैस पाई लाइन और जवाब हम 
گوادر کون نہیں بننے دیں گے کیوں اگر یہ دو چیزیں آ جائیں تو ہم آپ کو قرض دیں گے انشاءاللہ ایک سال میں آپ کا قرض بھی آگے مجھ میں مانیں گے اور آپ کو جتنا قرض چاہیے ہوگا ہم آپ کو دیں پھر امیگریشن قوانین کے اندر جو تبدیلیاں لائے گئے یہ پاکستانیوں نے آپ کی تعمیل ترقی میں بڑا کردار دیا بہت کردار ادا کیا ہے اور یہ پورا من پاکستانیوں نے یہاں ثابت کیا ہے اور تمام مسلمانوں نے یہ ثابت کیا ہے کہ وہ جس ملک میں بھی اس کے قانون کی پاسداری ہے تو میں پھر ایک بار گزارش کروں گا کہ بیرون ملک موجود تمام خاص طور پر ملکوں کو تو دہشت کرنی سے جائے ان کو وہی پرنے دیئے جو آپ ہمیشہ سے اپنے اتحادی کو دیا دیئے میں چاہوں گا کہ آپ کو یہ بتانا کہ ان ڈرون سے ڈرون ملو سے بے شک کیا شکر کریں نو ڈاؤ لیکن محسوس بچے خواتی پختون ہمائیدی وہ بھی شریف ہیں امن اللہ شکر کے ہزاروں ایسے لوگ بھی شریف ہیں جو اس دہشت کے لیے خیال مڑ رہے ہیں اور الحمدللہ میں تو سترہ بیان اور بہنشاہ کی ٹاپ آف در ہیٹنس کی اس کو کہتے ہیں مولا ہے جس کی گواہی بہشت کر رہے ہیں یہ علی کا چاہے بادا سرکار ہے جوانا سکتا ہے انشاءاللہ تعالیٰ شاید پھر آخر اپنے بعد جب آپ سے ملاقات ہوں محسن کو دیں اگر دنیا نے ہمیشہ جنہ ہوتا تو چودہ سو سال تک قبرے آباد ہی ہیں لیکن چند قبرے ایسی آباد ہیں کہ چودہ سو سال بعد بھی ان قبروں سے ثابت جسے مہارا ہیں جو آشکار ہیں اس میں تو تمام کسی بھی مذہب کے اندر دہشت کرتے ہیں تو انسانیت کو تکلیف دینا چھوڑ میں یہ بات کو کرتا ہوں خاص طور پر اہلے کتاب لیکن قبر سے قبر میں کتنی دن لاش مہینہ دو مہینہ تین مہینہ چار مہینہ سال ہڑیاں نازوں دس سال پھر بار بیس سال ختم تو چور سو سال میں جس کو اللہ نے حضرت نہیں دی تم بے بیدر تارے بانو اور بیشت کرو گے اس کی لاز کو خوب کے کبھر کے لاز کو اللہ نے حضرت نہیں دی خدا کی نظر کو تمہاری شکل پر یہ بہت ہی کسی کی جائے میں رہے جب تمام اپنے لئے اسے پیچھا رہا ہے یہ کیا رہا ہے دردوں میں اور بازدوں میں بازدوں میں اور بازدوں میں اور بازدوں میں میں نے کہا کہ اچھی آئی نہ رہا ہوں اگر نے کہا کہ یہ خواہ میں نے آپ سے وہ شیئر پڑھا 
اگر مزاق ہے اسلام کی تقدیر کے ساتھ کہتا ہوں سہن کا سرکارہ ہے تقدیر کے ساتھ تو دنیا میں یہی بتا لیتے ہیں جو رہا ہے کہ اسلام میں کوئی سکون نہیں ہے یہ بھائی رات کو سوٹ روٹا ہے صبح پڑھتا ہے لا الہ الا اللہ محمد رسول اللہ اب سب کو دیتا ہے کہ مسلمان ہو گیا دنیا میں رمانی میں دو دو لیکن سب سے زیادہ حق ہم ہوگا ہے الحمدللہ میرے تو جب تک کسی نے آج تک بھتوں کو سجدہ نہیں کیا اور یہ عاشق رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم انشاءاللہ تعالیٰ اپنے آخری سانس تک ان قوتوں سے دلتا رہے انسانیت کی بقا کے لیے لڑے گا اور اس کے اندر ایک کردار کی ضرورت ہے یہ جنگ کردار کے ذریعے لڑی جاتی ہے اور بھائی کردار جہاں کی جنگ جاؤ ہو جائے وہی میں کوئی بڑا کرتی ہے اور وہ بڑا کرتی ہے اور کردار کو تاثر کے لیے پھر سوچا بڑا کرتا ہے Taliban. 
And he said that he's proud of being a Pakistani and he offers salam to all those innocent martyrs who have sacrificed their lives um, to demonstrate that Islam is a peaceful religion. And one of the things he said is that a nation that fails to unite on righteous principles is cursed to have leaders who are unjust. So, and the rest of his speech focused on asking questions to the American public as well as to the uh, American government. And I'm going to talk to you about that now. That he said that I've been in U.S. and uh, he said above me is God and behind this wall is a pentagon. So I'm going to ask some pointed questions. And one was that, okay, so 9 11 happened and people from all faiths died, but how come? We are now supporting, meaning U.S., uh, Paris and Syria. He said these, this is a dangerous time because these events are leading to World War III. If we are not careful, he said that um, Al Qaeda was criticized by all after 9/11. Everyone, all reasonable people all over the world, did that that. But now U.S. policy is actually supporting Al Qaeda in Syria. He said that Pakistan, 81,000 people died in Pakistan after 9-11. And Pakistan offered, it is, is the front line of defense against terrorism and is protecting the rest of the world from terrorism. Yet, it appears that America does not recognize that and that uh, so many Pakistanis have been killed by drone attacks, innocent Pakistanis, and yet there has not been even any official apology. And he said 90% of the Pakistanis are saying the same thing as he is. That, uh, and, 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 and he asked a very good question, and that was that if you were saying that Pakistanis are support, or the terrorists who are going to Syria and getting killed and coming back in body bags, then how come no one is going to their funerals? No Shia, no Sunni, there has been no uh, major funeral being organized for these people if you think that Pakistanis are supporting that. Um, he said that we know how to defend ourselves, don't worry about us, but if we do call us an ally, then how about we have to wait three hours in immigration lines to enter the United States? Um, we are the front line of defense against terrorism, and 800,000 Muslims have died since 9 11 all over the world, and even now we stand with the policies of the West and will continue to do us, do that, but at least give us some respect and do treat us as an ally. And he said that I am one of the youngest senators in the world, and I love Pakistan. And uh, he um, he said that uh, American attitude now is isolating the United States of America from the rest of the world. And um, how can you forget who did, who was responsible for 9/11? And a decade later, now you're negotiating with Taliban. And um, and media, particularly Hollywood is uh, showing movies in which they show that terrorists have taken over nuclear weapons and he said, don't worry about that, that's not going to happen. We are going to be those people strong and we know how to defend our nuclear weapons. He said, you call us a terror nation and, um, and then you stop us from uh, pursuing the pipeline project uh, of, and, and uh, declaring the water as our port and so that we can pursue economic prosperity in Pakistan. Um, and simultaneously, you call us a terror nation, and you will also stop us from pursuing uh, positive economic development. He said, I'm on a hit list of 17 terrorist organizations, but I'm not scared to die. Terrorists have gone, and then he said, that terrorists have gone after the sacred graves of the companions of the Prophet. And going after that has now transformed that war Terrorist from the terrorist war into a battle between those who love profit and those who oppose profit. So now this is the next level of transformation in the war against terror. And he said that you, talking to Americans, he said, American government, you must accept the responsibility of weaponizing the terrorists for using drones against innocent people. And now he said that this war has become a war of character. And we will defeat the terrorists with the character of the same man. And in the end, he said that you must change your attitude towards us. And before pointing finger at, finger at us, 
look at yourself and look at your own character. And you pray for strengthening the Pakistani army so that they can defend against the terrorists and save the world from the catastrophe of the Third World War. Thank you. I don't know. 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 I don't know.